at Maple Leaf Gardens last night. But the battle on this particular occasion belonged to Buffalo. The Sabres snipers were finally sniping, and an all-together effort produced two points for the American side. Again, Dominic Hasek provided the heroics in the trenches. Tonight, it's another international skirmish. The Vancouver Canucks storm the Marine Midland Arena. Jen Red along with Jim Lorenz and Danny Gear. Four goals in a game. Can you believe it for Buffalo? Almost unheard of. Uh, <laughs> at least certainly recently, uh, Buffalo have had a very difficult time scoring goals, but not last night. Uh, but I thought uh, it was a very determined effort. Uh, the total team was focused. Uh, Michael Pekka led the way with some big hits. Dominic Hasek was great in goal. And Curtis Brown, who is really developing into an outstanding player, opened the scoring for Buffalo on a neat play in the corner. That got everything going in the right direction. And then the goal scorers took over. Derek Plant, who's been having trouble, gunned a slap shot over the left glove of hot man. Then it was Donald Adet scoring his first goal in 11 games. And Miroslav Shatan, who's been having some problems putting the puck in, beat uh, Pot Van with a one-timer, and Buffalo skated away with a 4-1 victory. And I know the Buffalo coaching staff is certainly happy to see some of the scorers begin to score. It was a good night for uh, our guys that uh, you know, we'd like to see score goals. Uh, I mean, everybody would like to score goals, but uh, those guys, that's... Uh, that's what they're known for. That's what they're in the lineup for, uh, and, and that's what we'd like to see them do. And uh, we had a little shooting clinic the day before. A few of the guys got blisters from it. They shot about 500 pucks each, and uh, I don't know if it had anything to do with it, but uh, we scored some goals, and it, uh, it was a pleasant surprise. It was nice. Don't spell Messier much different than Messiah, I guess. And uh, I know in Vancouver, when the Canucks signed on Mark Messier, they kind of thought of him in that regard. Well, th that's for sure. Uh, I don't know if they think of him exactly that way now, but uh, big Mark Messier uh, can still play this game uh, with great authority. Uh, 15 goals, 24 assists for Vancouver. Uh, one of the great power forwards. And Pavel Burry, maybe the most exciting player in the National Hockey League. Uh, 27 goals, 52 points. And, of course, uh, those two players play on the same line. So that means that uh, we're going to see Michael Pekka, I'm sure, matched up against Mark Messier here this evening. And put into that mix, our old friend Alexander Mogilny is back, and he'll give the coaches of the Buffalo team something to think about. And Don Lever is with Danny Gare right now. Danny? Donnie, a strong game last night in Toronto, and then up again tonight against the Canucks. What are your keys against them tonight? Well, I guess you can kind of compare this team a little bit to New York with uh, two great superstars that can... Uh, can burn you up with Miguel Nabiri, and then you add Messi in the in the uh, fringe there. So I think if we're going to play the same type of system we played against New York, if we play a real solid defensive game, we're going to be better offensively. So I think that's the way we got to look at it. Good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you. I take you back to the start of last season. Buffalo opened up in Western Canada, lost in Calgary, lost in Edmonton, went to Vancouver. Dominic Hasek absolutely stoned the Canucks in a 2-1 win. Well, the good news hit Western New York harder than the winter storm this afternoon. Dominic Hasek has signed on for yet another year with the Buffalo Sabres. Special announcement. West Coast weather conditions caused by El Nino may result in severe winter weather in the metropolitan area. Because Nissan inventories must be reduced before the blizzard of 98 arrives, Nissan is now offering $2,000 cash back when you purchase or lease any new 98 Pathfinder or Maxima, as well as a special lease deal on the new 98 Altima. But you must act before January 19th. Get $2,000 cash back while supplies last. 
Nissan's Blizzard 98 sales event ends January 19th. a piece of Buffalo Sabres action at the Sabres store at Marine Midland Arena, where you'll find the best selection anywhere of official Buffalo Sabres merchandise. From pro weight CCM game-worn jerseys to a huge selection of apparel, gift items, and more, you'll find it all at the Sabres store. Visit us on weekdays 10 till 5 or at a Sabres home game. You can also see Sabres merchandise on the internet or call us. Wear what the workforce wears. Shop where the workforce shops. The Sabres store at Marine Midland Arena. Saturday mornings on the Empire Sports Network, bowling is the name of the game. We start with the kids at 10 a.m. on the Pepsi Fun Time Junior Bowling Show. Don't let the youngsters fool you. We'll have some great shots and a lot of fun along the way. Then at 11 o'clock, the best bowlers in western New York hit the approach. Each week, four bowlers vie for the title and the $400 top prize on the Tops TV Challenge. From the kids to the adults, bowling is big on the Empire Sports Network. Sorry, fellas, there is no football this week. What? Now what are we gonna do? Abduction? Done that. Uh, who's Area 51? Uh, again. Check out Alien Invasion Week on TLC. New investigations, new evidence. TLC is really on the ball. Alien Invasion Week, hosted by Third Rock Swing Stewart. All next week, beginning Sunday at 9 on TLC. Sabres Hockey is brought to you in part by Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light, the official beer sponsor of the NHL. By the Document Company, Xerox. And by Tops. Tops never stops saving you more. Canada, we stand on God for the Carolina Hurricanes looking for his second win of the year here with the Vancouver Canucks now. Uh, goes against Abbott, still under the magic card of three at uh, the one end of the ice for the Vancouver Canucks tonight. And of course, it'll be Dominic Kashik at the other end, giving up only one goal in Toronto to the Maple Leafs last night as Hashik gets closer and closer to the 500 level and tries to lift his team to the same limit as well, 2.45. He has narrowed that GAA down to now. The referee is Don Van Massenhoven. 
And the linesman, Greg Dvorsky, Brad Kovacic, will be handling the lines here tonight at the Marine Midland Arena. Still a late arriving crowd because of the stormy weather outside all around western New York and southern Ontario. Pekka on the face off against Messier. It's taken away. Zitnik trying to come to center. Scoop shot in. Burke will slide up beside the net. Left around on the boards by Babbage working it up on the wing. Let's go to the middle of Babbage again. Babbage swinging it ahead. Messier got hooked to the ice and a penalty coming up here to Pekka. Then Messier grabs Pekka behind the net and takes him out. Messier's got to get him out of there. And now Pekka gets him there. Dominic Hasek was quick to get out of the net. And Messier, boy, he's at the short fuse tonight. You don't usually see him do something like that. He knew the penalty was going to go to Buffalo. And now he's going to end up having to get one as well, I would have to think. I would have to think also. Michael Pekka hooked down Mark Messier just inside the Buffalo Blue Line. Clearly a penalty. And Messier got all wound up and attacked Pekka behind the net. And, of course, we would expect this of these two teams. They're this tied for the second most penalties in the National Hockey League. And I have a feeling that this is the start of a number of these altercations. Well, we, we, we certainly eliminated the two captains 18 yeah. seconds into the game. They're both on their way to the penalty box. And Messier, of course, for the retaliation. And we'll see that matchup all evening. Lindy Ruff told me before tonight's game, that's matchup that he wanted. He wanted Michael Pekka to play against Mark Messier, Pavel Bure, and Gino Ojic started on that line, but we'll see Mike Keenan. He'll be switching things around all evening. So both players, uh, two minutes up on the board. No Pekka. doubt about the penalty whatsoever, partner. I'm sorry. No doubt about the penalty. Yeah, no question about that. And Messier immediately went after Pekka. So the faceoff is outside the Buffalo Blue Line, 18 seconds into the first period. Murray is on the ice with Mogilny. And it's on dead and flank up front for Buffalo. Scoop back and taken away by Zipnik. That's by Mogilny. Zipnik slipping around behind the net. Here's Zipnik coming away to center ice up on the wing. It comes for Schmelick in over the line. Schmelick trying to squeeze it through and Babbage broke it up. McGillney starting back. McGillney hitting the Buffalo line. He takes it off the pier and the shot. Oh, no. Oh, no. was a break for Buffalo. The great speed of Mogilney and Burre combining inside the Buffalo blue line. Mogilney gained the line and then a simple little drop pass and the quick wrist shot by Burre. Hashik bobbled the puck. It fell down in the goal crease and just knocked in the net. Hey, hey. Hey. Oh, no. blue before the puck crossed the goal line and the faceoff is to the left of Dominic Hashik. And now Linden is out along with Jeff Sanderson. So, boy, the Canucks have got a lot of gunners, don't they? They have some great offensive players, but they haven't been able to win. They're all seven and four. They'll end up back in Vancouver territory as Lume hustles back after it. Lume swinging it behind the net, chases after it in Squeezed out in the corner. Babbage covers up and drops it off to Linden. Linden now taking a look. They have to leave it in the corner. Whipped up ahead. Sanderson feeding it to Trevor Linden at center ice to Sanderson and over the line. That's taken away. Here's Chatan scooping it up. Chatan swings around, giving it to Woolley. Woolley trying to leg it through center ice. Flipped it ahead, but the Canucks will get it back again. Taken by Hedekin. Edelkin got it to center. McKee flips it back in the other direction. Got it in over the line. Chapin has slowed down. And Matthias Olin recovering from Vancouver. Olin swinging it around on the board. Plant keeping it in. And out is Bushell and the shot right on. And Burke to save. Taken away by Hedekin. Hedekin trying to leg it out of his own zone as he comes away as far as the blue line is denied. And chased back by Flynn. He stripped him of the puck. It's on. And fires it wide. Held in by Buffalo again. Kicked around behind the goal. It slides to the corner. And he's racing in there. Trying to drop it off and ends up going to center ice. Shannon at his own line, dealing it through the middle. And it 
intercepted by Pettigan, and now up there for Lume. Lume taps it around to Brett Hedigan. Up for Gure. Gure to McGillney. Kicks it up onto his stick to the Buffalo line and over. Gure leaving it there to Gure. He's checked in the corner. Now worked up ahead to the blue line and taken away at center was Shannon. Penalized players return. Shannon and over by Taylor. What a record! Great save by Burke on our dead. Back comes Gure. Gure looking and fires it off the glass around the boards to center ice. Two and a half minutes into the opening period. Taken away now by Buffalo with Barnaby swinging into the shot. Her kick that away. Barnaby after it again, keeping it in there. Here's Barnaby trying to force it in front, but it's knocked down and Lume scoops it out to center ice. Tipped in over the Buffalo line. Messier spinning around at the blue line. Messier sending it back into the corner. Here's Messier with it again. Messier trying to fire it in front. He hit the side of the net. It's cleared free to the blue line. Barnaby took it, didn't get it out. Tipped in again. Tipped into Bure. Bure, great shot. Dropped down in front. Messier picked at it. And it's scooped away in central center ice. Hedekin tracking it down for Vancouver. He'll flip it up ahead. And that will end up bouncing right out of play. Over three minutes gone by here in the opening period. Still no score, but plenty of opportunity. Where's the coming, boss? We're coming. Don't obstruct up! Move it! Ah! Move the puck! I've never changed my mind. You get two. You get two. No! 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 Yes! I don't know your name, but I can tell you something. Tired of getting thrown out yet? If you keep holding the way you're holding, you're going to sit there for the rest of the game. Keep it going. Keep it going. You. Drop it. Get in there and shut up. Keep it going. Keep it going. That's all. That's all. Did you like that? Fucking bad. Taking a left instead of his usual right, Joe found himself about to have his very first taste of rhubarb pie when it hit him. Hard. Wait a minute. What else haven't I tried? What other people haven't I met? What other oceans haven't I swum in? What other pies haven't I eaten? Dandy, a veteran witness of existential crises, slowly refilled his coffee. Joe smiled and bit into the big unknown. It tasted great. Donald Adept scored a goal last night against the Toronto Maple Leafs. He had a great opportunity a couple of minutes ago on a... Nice pass from Daryl Shannon, and what a piece of goaltending by Sean Burke. We talk about the lateral movement of Haffy, Hashik. Well, Burke showed us some great lateral movement on that play. Hoogner knocking it down now, didn't get it out, kept in, and then stolen away by Verata. That'll be deflected through center by Pekka Lume, hustling back after it for the Canucks. Lume takes a look, tipped it up through center ice. It's gunned in by Sanderson to the corner. Hashik backing it off the boards, doesn't get it out. Pekka will. Pass to the blue line and carrying on Buchner. Buchner fired it ahead and under the line. Brought out back to Ward. Didn't get a shot on. Ward turning again. Good shot. Wide of the net. Hops around to the other side. Barada's got it in the corner. Barada spinning away from a check. Went down, but he keeps it in there. There it's with the Ward. Putting it out in front. Back it comes to Pekka. Pekka took a shot. Burke the save and finally hangs on to it. Lots of traffic in front of him, including Wetzlaw Barada. Well, tonight's six deep discount scratches for the Buffalo Sabres include Brian Holsinger, who did not play last night, Andy Burge, and Mike Wilson. So the identical lineup, the Sabres uh, going here tonight, uh, as in Toronto. And what we just saw a couple of moments ago uh, from Lindy Ruff's Hockey Club, and he was telling me before the game, he said... Uh, Yes, they, they have two great lines, two excellent offensive lines, but they are weak down low. And the Sabres work them down low. In other words, in the corners and in front of the net, that created a couple of uh, scoring chances for the line of Michael Pekka. And a quick shot now doesn't get through, and Messier tips it up ahead. Picked up by Brashear to center. He'll scoop it off into the corner. Charging after it, Brashear tried to catch up with him, but he gets away. McKee flipped it as far as center ice. Barnaby, he gets hammered at center by Brashear. Barnaby and over the line by Brown now. Trying to clear it in front. Brashear after it again. Barnaby went after him. And they mix it up back in behind the play. Barnaby comes all the way to center ice and ends up in the Buffalo zone. Chick Gray comes back to the point. Not out. Now Barnaby's got it again. Barnaby will need a player. Take the return pass from Brown. Barnaby coming in over the line. Barnaby took a shot. He flicked it just wide of the net. Grossi keeping it in. Gets control of it around on the board. Chick back into the corner again. Work three once again. Third out in 
front. Shannon can't catch up with the puck. It's taken away by Brashear. Hey, long pass hey, to Jure. Jure floating in over the Buffalo line. Let's get back to the point. It's kept in there by Sillinger with a shot. Kicked away. There's Lume holding it in. He pulled it in front of the net. It comes to the board. It's not out. Kicked in. And finally, McKee recovers for Buffalo. Swings it around to Groshek. Didn't get it out, though. Connects keeping it in again. And it's taken back by Groshek. Class A's pass. Shatan. He'll leave it there. And worked away to center. And a pass ahead for Shatan. Too high for him. Skips around to the boards. And the Canucks get there first. And this will be icing coming up against Buffalo. In your face, maximum lacrosse. Only a phone call away. Takes the bandage January 17th as they take on the New York Saints at 8 o'clock. Tickets now on sale at the Marine Midland Arena box office. All fantastic locations. The Penn Center and selected Canadian Fire outlets. To reserve your seat for all the maximum action, 888-4000 or in Canada, 888-223-6000. Operators standing by until 9 tonight. Buffalo Bandits Lacrosse. I'll face up to the right of Dominic Hasek, and we ain't seeing no trap tonight, folks. Uh, I'll tell you that much. He, Vancouver Canucks do not play it. They like to pursue the puck. That's one thing that uh, Mike Keenan really stresses is puck pursuit. And, of course, the Sabres play a similar type of game. You'll see the trap when there's no chance to forecheck, and then the teams will drift into a 1-2-2. But certainly the Canucks do not play it. To be scooped away by Zitnik. It's going to make it down. Yes, and it's coming right back again. So that just served to take a few seconds off the clock. Zitnik tried to feather it down the ice, but a little too hard. I had a chat with uh, Brett Ledger, uh, who played uh, here in Buffalo for a number of years before the start of tonight's game. He was a little disappointed. He said before the coaching change was made, he was playing upwards of 25, uh, 27 minutes per game. And when Mike Keenan took over, his ice time has been cut back uh, about in half, he said. But he said, I'm trying to stay positive and to keep working hard. Gipnik now will swing it away to center ice. The pass up on the wing to Audet. Lost control of it. Ledger takes it back. And then Ledger tossed it right into his own bench. And of course, uh, Mike Keenan, the head coach of the Vancouver Canucks, he took that position on November the 13th, the 14th head coach in the history of the Canucks. Clear off ice. I haven't seen him either. No, I haven't yet. either. He's usually popping ice cubes the whole game, isn't he? Just <laughs> continually throwing them up there. It's a New Year's resolution. <laughs> the Callister's got to come up with it in the corner. All six foot seven of them. It's rolled around on the board. Set to the blue line and finally deflects the center ice. This one back in again by Shipman. Callister's got it once more. His pass is intercepted, but it's taken back, and the Canucks will take it away to McGillney. McGillney racing after it in the corner, and Smellick put down his check, and Buffalo will be shorthanded here as... Schmelich wrestled down Nasland. Yeah, you can see that one coming. R Richard Schmelich just did not have good position on Nasland. And Nasland, give him some credit. He did a great job of just never never stop skating, headed to the front of the net, and Richard Schmelich pulled him down. And so the Canucks, along with Alexander Mogilny, will try for the first time tonight on the power play. There will be no argument from Schmelich on that misdemeanor. And at 6.21, the Canucks have the man. Pretty good power play. When you look down there, Messier at center, Linden on left wing, Mogilny on right, Burry on the right point, and Oland, who could be the next Calder Trophy Rookie of the Year winner, is playing the left point. Yes, Oland. Oh. 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 right on and scooped away by Ward to center ice. Great opportunity for the Canucks, but Hasek was there again. Messier being chased by Pekka, leaves it for Linden. Linden to Messier again. He gains the puck the line, whoa, over the line, and McGillney stepped in on the offside. Alex McGillney wasn't exactly sure what Messier was going to do. He got a half a stride inside the blue line. McGillney, of course, missed the first 16 games of this season. He was unsigned. He came back and... His experience in a, a groin pull, he missed another six games. Only the fourth player to score 50 or more goals with two teams. Dominic Ashik has been terrific here in the early going as Linden tried to beat him through the five hole and couldn't do it. Shannon takes his time. He'll just sail it away and send it down the ice with a minute and a half to go and the Buffalo penalty. Over. Gathering it in and leaving the rush to Bure. Bure got away from Pekka and comes to center. Bure to the Buffalo get it, get it. zone. Tried to drop it off. Picks it up in his skates again. They bang on it on the board. Kicked hey, into Bure. Bure swings it around into the corner. Kicked in front of the net. That's chopped away. And now Ward will send it down the ice. Bure heading to the bench.
points for Vancouver. Messier starting out once more. He was denied, however, by Plant. Here's Messier coming again with a minute to go on the power play. The Fury flipped it in over the line, but Sanderson couldn't control it that time. Brought back in, Messier again in front. Sanderson shot is right on. Hashik the save. We're back to the point to Fury. Giving it back to Linden. Linden, top of the circle, going down low. Sending it in to Sanderson. Got it in front. That's taken away. Here comes Shiftick. Coming away with Dawg. Two on one. Dawg throws a shot and misses the net. Sent around to the boards. Four on two. And Kluber coming back. Pulling in over the line. Dropped it in. It's cleared in front. That's the flick for a while. Shiftick ties up his man in the corner. Kick three. And Bookner's got it now. He cleared it. And got it as far as center ice. Ten seconds to go on the Buffalo penalty. Ledger dropping it off. It'll be swung in. Long to the saber net to the corner. Hashik is way out of the net. Moving around to the board. Kick three and cleared away through center ice. Buffalo coming back to full stretch. Malik stepping out of the box and firing one in. Left back there for Ledger. Grant Ledger works it up on the wing. Perhaps going to get away again. Looking at a cross ice to Naslund. He can't get any farther. It's knocked down at the line. Brought in over the line by Lume. Yuki Lume dropped it off. It's taken away and whipped out to center ice to Barnaby. Couldn't pick up the pass. Recovered by Hedekin. Firing it in the other direction. And Putner came over to step into Lume. And play has been called down. And another penalty coming up here to Buffalo. The Sabres running into shorthanded situations. I whack the weeds. <laughs> so you want to know what's on my Discover Card statement. I'm a camp cook, and a bad one, but I've got a good stove. And he loves to chase that. <laughs> the cash back bonus award. It all folds up into a carry. Uh, she loves to get flowers, and I love to give them. How many credit cards make a statement like that? Well, the toughest thing about uh, buying a wetsuit is, is trying them on. <laughs> it pays to discover. Accept it where you see the nervous sign. Boone there's in the penalty box two minutes for interference and Mike Keenan uh, that commercial timeout certainly helped him he's able to get his big guns back on the ice again. Lume keeping it in now and it's set it up again second consecutive power play for Vancouver no score in the first quick shot right on scooped away not out Lume keeping it in Lume dropping it off now to Bure Bure back at the point over to Lume again ducks away from one feeds it off into the corner Linden's got it there Linden along the wall Slips it back to Lume Cookie shot that's deflected right in front of the net picked up by Buffalo not out comes in front again and finally is scooped away through center by Schmelich and back after it Lume once again for Bure Gets it over to Lume got it to center ice McGillney chips it in over the line Messier hanging on to it on the wall sends it back to Bure now to Lume on the other side watched by Schmelich shot behind the net Hashik knocked it away Shot goes wide around to the board. Sabres get it and Ward steps to center, puts it up to Pekka. Pekka up to the line, trying to duck away. Quick shot and it deflected off Bure wide of the net. Less than a minute remaining in the penalty. Coming foul! Walked wide by Pekka. Ward's after it again. Back to the point. McKee throws one right on. Picked away by Brunt. And then uh, Bure starts out of his own zone. Bure feeding it up ahead and over the line. Dazzling with a shot, that's taken away. Dawes got it in the corner. Dawes spinning around behind the net, getting free, plays it to himself off the boards and dumps it down the ice. 20 seconds remaining in the Lutzer penalty. Canucks with a pass to Hedekin. Brett Hedekin works his way and fires the Buffalo line and over. He gets taken down by Shannon. It's recovered in the corner. McKee couldn't control the puck though. 
beside the net. Tucked away to the board, still on out. Vancouver kicking it in to Hedekin. Hedekin dumps it off on the wall, out in front, quick shot, fired right on, and Hasek's got that one and hangs on to it just as the Sabres come back to full strength. Well, I'll tell you, Dominic Hasek just read the play. I mean, I mean, he knew exactly where the puck was going to be passed, managed to make sure that the upper part of the net was covered. The Canucks are shooting high on Dominic Hasek here in the first period. I mentioned last night in Toronto that Mike Murphy, the coach of the Leafs, uh, thought Dominic Hasek was the best goaltender in the league at covering low because of his great movement with his legs and his skates. And the Canucks uh, trying to shoot high on him here tonight, and they're not successful. He's played in 40 of the 45 games this season for the Buffalo Sabres, and has handled eight shots uh, perfectly here with 9.06 remaining in the opening period. Buffalo's had five shots, but the Canucks have had two power players. Not a thing to show. Sabres have yet to get a man advantage situation. Vancouver holding it in on the face off. Roll back to the front. Nolan works it down low. Nolan puts it right in the goal. Race taken away by Chetan. Hatchet gets knocked down. A penalty coming up here to McGillney. But comes to center ice and scooped in by Chetan to the corner. Vancouver coming up with the puck. And now the penalty will go. And Primo is challenged in the corner. Now Ray is over there. And Ojic is also in the mix. Buchner is involved. And they all start swirling around in the corner. No punches thrown yet. The original penalty was going to go to Mogilny, I believe, for knocking down Kashik in the goal crease. Or was it to Ojic? Whatever it is to Vancouver. And now everything settles down as... Uh, Penalty or penalties will be called. Less than nine to go here in the first period. It is scoreless. Here's an update on our top story. Police now confirm the Bud Ice Penguin has been captured. Authorities say it is now safe to serve Bud Ice. That's right, just uh, bring it all out in the open there. Nothing to worry about, everything's fine. And now, back to the music. Doobie, doobie, do. Drink bought ice, but uh, beware of the penguins. This is the interior of the burliest sport utility in its class. The one that can tow and carry more than any other. Now that's probably hard to believe when you're surrounded by all this. So to underscore the new Dodge Durango's serious credentials, I'm not only standing beside the most powerful V8 in the class, I'm wearing this manly flannel shirt. Durango. New ground for the new Dodge. Dave Sketchard uh, received four minutes in penalties. Uh, Bugner's in the penalty box. Uh, two of the four minutes are coincidental, so Buffalo on a power play. Oh, no, I got Sketchard and McGillney mixed up. In the corner now, Platt tried to dig it free, but it's taken away by Lumet. Lumet will take his time, and he'll guide one down the ice. First Buffalo power play opportunity. Chipnik takes a peek, swings it over on the wing. Woolley dishing one through center to watch it. Platt with the shot off the glass, tipped around to the board. Chetan holding it in. Now it's broken up, but the Sabres keep it in. Flat went down, put back to Shitnick. He scoops it free to Shitan. Then it comes again to the corner to Plant. Plant taking a look out in front. Here's Derek Plant. Takes a return pass. Clears it across ice. And Willie couldn't control the puck. Look free in the corner. Buffalo keeping it in. To Shitnick again. Climbs up. Plays a shot right on. But it's knocked down in front of the net. Cleared away to center ice. Now comes Pierre. Chetan helps out. Chetan up on the wing now to Pekka and over the line. Pekka plays it off the boards to himself. Skewed it back and Chetan to shove it off. Rebound in front of the net. But it's scooped away and drilled off the boards and down the ice. Half a minute remaining in the penalty. 
Ripped into the corner. Joseph goes battering in there after it. Trying to get it to Pekka. He's battled for it on the wall. And it's squeezed out by Vancouver and back down. Pashik will handle it and give it to Schmelich. Still time for one more rush for Buffalo. Schmelich got it up on the wing. McKee got checked. It's taken away now by Richard Schmelich. Schmelich puts it ahead into the line. It's knocked down. Sabre trying to hold it in. Stuck back into the corner. And recovered. Cleared out the center ice. Whips it up to center ice to Barnaby. Can't come free. Get back in the other direction. Pekka scooping it ahead. Buffalo making changes. Made up on the wing. Oshik. Oshik will dish it in over the line. Back after him, Willie. Willie left it behind the net. Swung around to the board for Barada. Barada tipping it up to center ice. Here comes Ward in over the line. And lost control of it and went to center. Ward got it again. Pulling away from Ward. In over the band. reached out and pulled down Ward. Well, Dixon Ward tried the left side of the ice. That didn't work, so he reversed it, headed to the opposite side, and Vancouver ends up taking a penalty. And there's two minutes for hooking Marcus Aslund in the penalty box. Gino Ojek had a great chance at Dominic Hatchik. Ojek, Ojek had just vacated the penalty box, took a long lead pass, and tried to beat Dominic Hasek on the glove side. The puck flew into the left glove. Alex Shitnik made the defensive play of the night as he caught Pavel Burry from behind. Two of the league's great skaters going one-on-one. -on -one. And on that occasion, the race was won by Alex Shitnik. But the Sabres are on the power play. Another five weeks, those two guys will be teammates for the rest of the team in the Olympics. Held in by Shitnik into the corner. Couldn't catch up with it behind the net. Goes after it again. Lume broke it up. Didn't get it out. Daw keeping it in. Puts it into the corner. Again, no Leaving it back behind the net. He slapped at it again. Is that it? Got the shot. Didn't get through. Daw can't catch up with it. Goes after it again. Daw checked in the corner. Leaves the puck there to Platt. Platt spinning around. Undefeated in front. It bounced around behind the goal. Platt's got it again. Platt sending it back. some outstanding goaltending by Dominic Hasek at one end and Sean Burke at the other. But the Sabres look very sharp in moving the puck around in the zone. They're getting good position in front of the net. Jason Woolley with a quick release on the wrist shot. And I believe that was Jason Daw who deflected the shot. Daw in perfect position in front. Alex Zipnik also had an opportunity to score on the play and Burke stopped it and then swatted the rebound into the corner. The face off to the right of Sean Burke. Echo will take it against Linden. Echo winning the draw, swings it back. It's dropped off along the wall to Groshek. Groshek got it back to the point. McKee, Shannon, quick as shot. He picked it away. Groshek's got it in the corner. Groshek twisting around again to Shannon for Groshek. Groshek trying to work it down low. Drops it back. McKee comes in. That one skips off the body into the corner again. Scooped off the boards. McKee holding it in. And it's cleared back down by Groshek and all the way down the ice. But for Shannon. Well, I'll tell you, that part of doing a great job standing in front of the goaltender, but is paying the price. Right up on the wing now. Kicked in over the line. Left right there for Pekka. He whips it across. Puts it on. As Groshek let it rip, and Burke made the save. Flipped ahead and cleared all the way down the ice by Vancouver. With 15 seconds remaining in the power play for Buffalo. Shannon finding Pekka. He'll slip it back. Taking away through center now. Schmuck over the line. Dishes it off in the corner. 
Sam was cruising along when he was broadsided by the coolest driver of all, Love, a.k.a. Sophie. Now he was at the intersection of his life, waiting for the light to change. To his left, he saw his never-taken trip to Nepal. To his right, that girl from Savannah with the tattoo. And straight ahead, he saw his future with Sophie. Green light, Sammy boy. What's it gonna be? Love one, tattoo girl, zero. period come up in our first intermission i'll talk to gary zolas the chairman of the buffalo sabers season ticket holder advisory board we'll go back to the empire studios and rick and jim will have their analysis on this first period upstairs to you guys plenty of skidding here in the first period and they were skidding so hard that they're losing their edges <laughs> yes. forward gets some attendance uh, from the trainer at the vancouver bench boy it's been a wide open period oh. 11 shots on goal for the Canucks, 10 for Buffalo. Trap, snap. No. Well, jam it in the corner now. Primo tried to fly it free. Kept in by the Canucks, though. Came in inside the net. Has she cocked it away? No, he tried to feed it out in front. He's got it again. Going around behind the net. Sanderson leaving it to Linden. Linden turning on the wall. He drops it out in the corner. And he recovers behind the Buffalo net. Kutner up for Chatan. Chatan takes it off the board. Two center eyes and just failing to get away. Primo, now he does. Primo gets in over the line and falls, and Burke makes the save. And again, some pushing and shoving right at the edge of the Vancouver goal crease. Well, a nice piece of work in the neutral zone by Wayne Primo, and that uh, ends up with a face-off at the Vancouver end of the rink. And it's time now for our Aflac trivia question of the Amen. evening. With the score tied 0-0. You know, Ojek led the NHL last season with 371 penalty minutes was the only other Canuck to ever lead in that department. And before the scuffle in front of the net broke up, Mr. Brashear and Mr. Ray uh, exchanged New Year's greetings. Uh, Gino Ojek uh, is always a candidate for leading the National Hockey League in penalty minutes. He's the all-time leader on the Canucks with over 2,100 minutes. Looks like a bad guy. <laughs> well, he's good at his role. Yes, sir. There's Ward trying to pry it free along the boards. He does. Swinging it around behind the net. Jam back there again. Still fighting for it. Lume tying up Pekka. Kept in by Buffalo. Parada. Well, he'll drop it off and give it away to Messier. Messier steps away to center, but can't control the puck. But now Vancouver gets it again. Gary, get over the line. Intercepted. Look back in the other direction to Bure again for McGillney. He gets checked. Here's Ward charging after it. In over the line with Verona and Pekka. Pekka with Tyler. That one is grabbed by Burke and he hangs on to it. Who says there's no run and gun hockey in the National Hockey League? My goodness. First Vancouver at the Sabre end of the rink is Mark Messier gunned to one timer that Dominic Hasek stopped. Messier bringing the puck out of the zone. And Mogilny with a quick pass up to Burry. Burry was a two-on-one with Messier. And Hasek, who moves better than anyone in the world from side to side, made the save on Messier's shot. Well, if Jacques Lemaire saw this first period, I'll tell you what, the EMTs would have to run a shuttle service. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh, it's great. 12 shots apiece. No score. Great goaltending. Sabres holding it in. It's worked back to the point. And front line, the shot! 
Harper put behind him, but he made the save. Cleared away to center ice. Ojek racing after it, and Booker came over to take him out. Classic way out of the net to break it up. Shopped around behind the Buffalo net. Willie gets it back. It's fired around on the boards. Taken away to center with Barnaby. Barnaby leaving it there. Brown now deals it in to the corner. Barnaby racing it after it. Chopped it around behind the net to the other side. Vancouver bringing it away. Hedekin, the pass ahead. Tipped in by Ojek, and then Ojek chopping it. Bugner squeezes it up on the boards. The center ice for Audet. Audet cutting through the middle. He gets checked. It's taken back by Brashear. Moving it in his own end to McAllister. Feeding it up as far as the Vancouver line. Stolen away by Audet. Trying to clear it in front. He scores! He's got his shot away. And Bork has to cover up. And then McAllister cross-checking. Is that plan? He's taking a rough ride in front of the net. Yeah, it is. Boy, oh boy. He some lumber there. <laughs> what a great play inside the blue line by Jason Daw, though, as he took the pass from Donald Adet and tried to outmaneuver the defenseman. Buffalo, though, with some nice forechecking to cause a turnover just outside the line. Daw fed it across to Daw, or uh, Adet fed it across to Daw, who attempted to tip it over the sprawling defenseman. And then Plant got worked over in front of the Vancouver net, but no penalties uh, called. My re initial reaction, that had to be Barnaby yeah, with a six on his number. But the play said, that's not Derek. The way he was attracting all that company in front of the net. Down to a minute and a half remaining in the period. Boy, oh boy, this has been wide open. Shots on goal, 13 apiece. Yep, we're in the first period. Callister getting it at center. That'll be scooped ahead, knocked down. Buffalo starting back again. Plant. Whips one in. Kirk will leave it back there. Redmond's got it around the boards. Not out. Kept in by Buffalo. Cleared right in front, but McAllister knocked it away. And there's a penalty coming up to Vancouver. Tux trying to break the play out of the zone, and Grant Ledgerd was knocked down. I'm wondering if, it, if it's not going to be called on Buffalo for a high stick. Vancouver had the puck when yeah. the penalty went. Well, then when the whistle went. I wonder if he, he blew the whistle quickly because he perhaps thought Ledger was injured. But perhaps. in any event, it's uh, it's Daw who got a stick up on Grant Ledger and clipped him in the face. And with 1.13 to go in the period, the Canucks will go on their third power play. And they have been exciting, but they haven't been able to score when they've had the man advantage. So a high sticking penalty. Ledger is getting attention at the bench. Tells the trainer that he's all right. it now for Vancouver, just a little over a minute remaining in the opening period. Lume swings it to Bure, he tips it through the middle. There's Linden trying to fight it on the outside. Smollick took him out and it's sent off the glass back in the other direction by Ward. But for Yerke Lume once again, he'll lug it himself and come straight to center and Ward steals it away. Nixon Ward, dishing one in, Lume tried to get a piece of it, rolls off into the corner, and Buffalo changes up front. Ure dashes right back again, through the Buffalo line, scoops it into the corner for Linden, bothered by Smollett, sails it around now, Bjorkar Messier leaving it there, McGilney to Messier, Messier checked in the corner, McGilney up out. Mogilny keeping it in to Bure to Mogilny. Mogilny, back it comes to Messier to Mogilny. 15 seconds to go in the period. Bure gives it to Mogilny again. Top of the circle. Mogilny took his shot. Pass it to save and there'll be no rebound. Well, I mentioned earlier in the hockey game that the two teams are the tied for the second most penalties in the National Hockey League. Both teams averaging 20 or almost 22 minutes per game, 21.8. Of course, uh, you have those kind of numbers. You expect to see power plays, and we have here in the opening period. Canucks with 10.7 seconds to go in the period will try to win this draw to the left of Dominic Ashing. Captain will try to do that. And Buffalo's captain. Came back to the point, kept in by Vancouver. Messier's got it again, sending it back to Fury. It goes to center ice, and that will do it. The opening period will come to a close on a long shot wide of the net by Pekka.
Well, perhaps the coaches don't like this kind of hockey, wide open, but I know what. I certainly do, and I know you do, partner. Well, the announcers think it's just Jim Dandy. That much, I can assure you. We haven't got a score here at the Marine Midland Arena after one, but we do have a total of 27 shots on goal, and 14 of those recorded by the Vancouver Canucks. It's cold outside in downtown Buffalo. In a GMC Yukon, every day brings something to look forward to. Oh, looks like a little snow today. For the most horsepower in its class and auto track four-wheel drive, Yukon may change the way you feel behind the wheel. See your Empire State GMC dealers today. to choosing the right motor oil, let's make something perfectly clear. Introducing three new oils from Quaker State, specially formulated for the vehicle you drive. Synthetic blends for hard-working engines and high-horsepower engines. A full synthetic for ultimate engine protection. Extra filtered with patented Micro-Q filtration to ensure your oil starts clean for a difference you can see and trust. So when it comes to protecting your vehicle, why take a chance? Quaker State, the choice is clear. Sabres Hockey is brought to you in part by McDonald's. Did somebody say McDonald's? Welcome back to Marine Middle and Arena. An exciting first period. Still no score after one period. And the Buffalo Sabres recently created an advisory board for season ticket holders to help with the problems and concerns of season ticket holders. And I talked to the chairman, Gary Zolas. I'm here with Gary Zolis, and Gary, you're the chairman of the Buffalo Sabres Season Ticket Holder Advisory Board. Now, it's a mouthful, but can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, the Buffalo Sabres Season Ticket Holder Advisory Board is something new that we're doing this year. It is a 22-member advisory board consisting of 22 season ticket holders. They are season ticket holders that have had their tickets for various durations from just recently or since the team's inception. Also, we represent all of the geographical areas, including Rochester and Canada. We also have various age groups represented. We also have males and females. We have a very good cross-section of our season ticket holders on this advisory board. Uh, what the advisory board does is builds a two-way bridge between Sabres management and the Sabres customers. Let me ask you a little bit about, uh, obviously, this was brought together because of problems and concerns. Can you talk a little bit about the issues that have come up uh, under the board? Well, actually, the board's uh, inception took place last year before turmoil. But some of the different things that we have discussed in meetings there have been ways to improve attendance, basically a way to help a team succeed in a small market. Basically, our goal is to tie this community tighter to this team, tie this team tighter to this team. Now, it sounds like a great idea. We, we wish you a lot of success and, uh, in the future, and I know if I have any concerns, I know where I'm going. <laughs> Actually, we just unveiled these shirts this morning. Like that. And you'll see the various members throughout the stands. If anybody in the building that has a question or concern or an issue that they would like us to take to the team, on their behalf, by all means, please stop, and we'd be more than happy to discuss it with you. Thanks for your time, Gary. Thank you, Danny. A wide-open first period. Still no score here between the Sabres and Canucks. After one, we'll be back with the boys from Empire Sports after this timeout. It's a natural instinct for a mother to care for her young which may also explain the tremendous popularity of the Ford Windstar, 
the only minivan to earn the government's five-star safety rating. And right now, a 98 Windstar comes with 1,500 cash back when you buy or 24 months red carpet lease. So follow your instincts. Your Western New York or Northern Pennsylvania Ford dealer today. Boy, he hit a beautiful wedge, and now he's got a tricky little left-to-right putt to win. Yes, and he's going to have to be firm with this. All you need to do is be close. That's five, four, three, or even two numbers. Take five. Five numbers to pick, just two numbers to win. Yanni, live in concert with his band and symphony orchestra in a spectacular new show. A compelling and moving musical experience you'll remember forever. Yanni, live, one night only, Saturday, February 7th at Marine Midland Arena. A night of favorites and music from his new album, Tribute. Reserve seat tickets are available now at all Fantastics outlets or charged by phone. Don't miss the timeless music of Yanni. The best coverage of the hottest stories in sports. Complete highlights of all the breaking games across the nation. The most up-to-date score. Forget the news. For your first look at the day in sports, this is the Empire Sports Report with host Mike DeGeorge. Good evening, I'm Mike DeGeorge, and this is an Empire Sports Report update. Just one other game in progress at this point. The Red Hot Blackhawks playing in the nation's capital right now. Chicago converting on just one of its six shots in the opening period. Alexei Zhamnov getting his 11th. We're looking at Yermir Yager. We'll get to him in a moment. Here's Zhamnov coming in for the goal. 1-0 Hawks. 1-0 after one, but 35 seconds into the second. It is Craig Berube using his chest right there to direct it home. 1-1 at that point. So let's run him down for you. It is now Washington 2-1 in the second San Jose, Colorado starting at 9 o'clock. Now we've heard this before and we're hearing it again tonight. Reports in Pittsburgh saying the Penguins and Yermer Yager on the verge of reaching a new contract. Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reporting tonight that a six-year, $48 million deal is imminent. 25-year-old Yager under contract right now to the end of next season, but it appears a new one is about to replace the old one. Well, coming up on the Empire Sports Report, following Hockey Hotline, we've got a full plate of sports for you. We'll tell you why a number of star athletes like Marino, Elway, and Favre are in New York tonight. It's for a tremendous cause, and we'll have the story. Also coming up, the latest on the Bills, including the coaching staff. What's up with Doug Flutie? Following tonight's game, it's Hockey Hotline with Brian Blessing and Mike Robitaille. But now, back to the arena and tonight's second period. Local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Travel provided by U.S. Airways. U.S. Airways makes it easy to fly to Florida, offering flights to 20 Florida cities. Sabres fans, hurry down to your neighborhood Sunoco A-plus mini markets to register for a trip to Washington, D.C. to see the Sabres take on the Capitals. Details at your neighborhood Sunoco A-plus mini market. Empire Sports Network, your home for Toronto Raptors basketball. See the all-new Discover Stars on Ice, presented by Smuckers. Olympic gold is coming. Live on the ice, Christy Yamaguchi, Scott Hamilton, Torba Lundin, Paul Wiley, Kurt Browning, Ekaterina Gordieva, and more. The most exciting, exhilarating, extraordinary night of the year. March 3rd at Marine Midland Arena. Tickets at the Arena Box Office and Fantastics locations are charged by phone. Celebrate Discover Stars on Ice, presented by Smuckers. 
The bandits are back. Individual game tickets on sale now. Call 888-4000 for more information. Although they did, the Vancouver Canucks and Buffalo Sabres could get nothing settled in the first period here at the Marine Midland Arena. And I know we harped on it a little bit in that first period, but boy, oh boy, I love this kind of hockey. Oh, I do, I do, I do. No trap, uh, no. as we mentioned. Uh, you ain't going to see it tonight, uh, <laughs> folks, that's for sure, because Vancouver doesn't play it. They love to pursue the puck. And with all those uh, the star players or maybe star players who haven't played like stars this year, but... But uh, Burre and Mogilny and uh, Messier and Linden, uh, they like to go offensive. Of course, what that means, sometimes they don't like it, look after their own end. And uh, we see all kinds of scoring chances that we did in the opening period. And one of the best scoring chances, though, came from a, an unlikely source. It sure did. Uh, Ojek came out of the penalty box and great lead pass, put him in on Dominic Hasek. Look at the glove stop, though, by the Dominator. You can see from that angle, even though when you go in on him, you don't see much net to shoot at. How about this stop by Sean Burke? Great pass across from Shannon, and Donald Ledette uh, thought he had his second goal in the last two games, but he was robbed, and Hasek with wanderlust as he came out of the net, and catcher tried to tip the puck over top of him, and Dominic made the save with the left shoulder. Well, of course, there was no scoring on the Discover card scoring summary, but boy, oh boy, there were lots of opportunities. 27 shots on goal. And we are here to tell you folks that uh, some nights uh, in the third period we're hard pressed to find 27 shots on goal. Isn't that the truth? And here, here it is in the first period. Uh, just not used to seeing this, uh, uh, well, really right through the National Hockey League. Uh, but it's a joy to watch. And I, I know Vancouver's not going to change uh, their game plan. No. I think you might see Buffalo try to tight, tighten it up a little bit. We should mention, too, there were a number of scoring chances. Teams had the man advantage. Mm -hmm. Make the right decision, insist on Karuba collision, and it's Wayne Primo who's involved in this one with the rookie defenseman of the Vancouver Canucks, Oland in the corner, and Primo gained a little attention from the Vancouver Hockey Club as they uh, kind of hinted that maybe he shouldn't do things like that. Well, that's right. Uh, it's what, interesting, though, what Mike Keenan does, isn't it? Uh, he puts uh, Mark Messi out there with Burry, and then he throws Big Ojek on the left wing. Then he puts out Alexander McGillney and maybe Sanderson, and then he puts Donald Brashear on the wing. So his, uh, his top players, his star players, certainly have protection when they are on the ice. And uh, I have a feeling uh, we're going to see uh, the, the team's uh, players start mixing it up here a little more as this game goes on. Well, it was only about 10 days ago that Gino Ojik was in the Mike Keenan doghouse. Somehow he's stuck out, and he's back into action again tonight. Go skiing, go golf. Save up to $10 on lift tickets at Holiday Valley. See your participating neighborhood golf dealer for details. Some restrictions may apply. Done that. Uh, who's Area 51? Uh, again. Check out Alien Invasion Week on TLC. New investigations, new evidence. TLC is really on the ball. Alien Invasion Week, hosted by Third Rock's French Stewart. All next week, beginning Sunday at 9 on TLC. Yeah. I picked up the cake. Did I authorize that? Sort of. At GHI, we've been helping employers take good care of their employees. For almost 60 years, we give employees direct access to doctors and hospitals throughout New York State. And we give employers a reasonable price tag for it all. Okay, what are you having, a boy or a girl? A boy and a girl. GHI. We put the care back in health care. If you're having debt problems, we can help. We're Consumer Credit Counseling Service of Buffalo. Your credit counseling program's the best thing that ever happened to us.
You taught us how to budget. And next month, we're buying our first home. Our counseling is free and confidential. We're here to help. Call 854-1710. Now's a great time to come home. Come home to Roses during our sales tax sale. Roses will immediately discount your purchase equal to the amount of the sales tax. Now's the best time to buy all appliances and electronics at the lowest prices. Plus, 50% off all furniture and bedding. For the biggest selection and lowest prices, come home. Come home. Sabres Hockey is brought to you in part by your local Chevrolet dealers. By the Discover Card, proud partner of the Smithsonian's 150th anniversary. And by Pepsi, Generation Next. Deadlocked at zero here at the Marine Midland Arena. Manhattan Bagel first period statistics. Turnovers, 16 apiece. Faceoffs, uh, 11 to 10 in favor of Vancouver. And the scoring chances, 4 to 3 Buffalo. Michael Pekka takes his position at center ice. His ice time in the first period, 7 minutes and 53 seconds. Pavel Burry, an incredible 11 mm. minutes and 9 seconds. I think he can keep that up, can he, all night long? Of course, he's playing the point on the power play, too, as he is right now, because Buffalo is shorthanded this time to period. Lume comes through center ice, in over the Buffalo line, works it down low, looking in front of the net, and Pesci knocked it away. But it's kicked in by McGillney. McGillney works it back, here a fucking shot, Pesci knocked that away. Good, fired it in front, rebound is ripped wide of the net. Tipped around to the boards, Pekka couldn't fish it out of the air. He took a bump from McGillney, stumped back into the corner. Messier got it to Bure. Over to Lume with a shot that found the glass. Into the blue line, not out. Worked across ice again. Lume dumped it back in. And Kluber still the man advantage. Flipped in line of the net. Now Buffalo is turning to full strength. Bure leaving it behind the net. Smollett worked it around to the boards and rolls it down the ice. No icing. Turn around, turn around. Around in the corner. Lume flips it around to the boards. Worked by Linden, out to center ice now. Brought in over the line, Sanderson trying to go wide. He gets checked. Audette flipped it up to center ice. That one hit the door at the Vancouver bench that was open at the time. All the way back to Hedekin. Moving up to Oland. Around to Ben Hedekin once again for Oland. Here's Oland, squeezes it ahead to Nasman. That's taken away, but Oland gets it once more. Can't get it out, goes after it again. Just puts it high in the air to the Buffalo line and over the line. It's kicked in there by Sanderson in front of the net. Backhand is knocked down. But not out. Kicked in again by Naslin. Naslin turning around, slipping it back to the point. It went to center ice. Broke it up by Shannon. Got it ahead now to Daw. Daw trying to get it on the outside. And he's checked by Olin. Back comes Vancouver. Setting up a play and over the line. Naslin drops it off. It's kicked in. Olin shot from the top of the net. Turned around on the boards by Shannon all the way to center ice. Flip back inside the Buffalo line. McKee takes it away. He gets it ahead. Grosha can dump one in. Burke leaving it back there. Only recovered by McAllister and he had difficulty moving the puck. Works around on the boards. Willie holds it in. Feeding it in now to Barnaby and Barnaby runs into McAllister. Canuck sending it back up the middle again. McAllister and Barnaby going at it behind the play. Right back in with a long shot. Kicked away as Newman let it go. Head back into the corner. Kicked in by Brashear. He got it behind the net. Out to Brashear. A quick shot. It scores! Brashear snuck that one in. What looked to be the short side. And Vancouver draws first blood. I think he fooled Dominic Hasek. I think Dominic thought that Brashear was going to pass the puck to the front of the net. And instead he fired it on the goaltender. And when you shoot the puck on the net, sometimes good things happen. And Donald Brashear, who doesn't score very often, scores his third goal of the year. And from a horrible angle, and you seldom see a goal like this scored on Dominic Ashen. But Brashear just fired the puck. Uh, well, looking at, on the, 
at it on the replay. I think Dominic just misplayed it. I don't think he misread the play as I initially thought. Just was not in the proper position, and that's something you seldom see Dominic Hasek do. But two minutes and 41 seconds into the second period, we've got a goal on the board. Woolley working it to Bugner, back to Jason Woolley, and he rushes away through center ice. Into Vancouver territory, took his shot, and Bugner knocked that away. Recovered by Linden. Linden trying to gain center ice, does, and taps it in. Bojic racing after it, Hasek is out of the net to back into the corner, but wait one minute. A penalty coming up here, and it's going to go this time to the Vancouver Canucks. They lead it by one here in the second. So, you did your homework and chose the Vortec Power, totally cool new Chevy S10 for just $169 a month. Or you could have got $1,500 cash back. Either way, friends who thought you were just smart will start calling you a genius. And why not? You landed yourself a rugged, dependable Chevy S10 and a great deal to boot. Of course, if you were a real genius, you'd invent a self-cleaning truck. Your S10's ready. Get it at your local Chevrolet dealer. Make a little work. We've never really had that big of a house before. That's so there's gonna be a lot going on on my Discover card. Fireplace. I love just the idea of surrounding myself with all my friends and family, and oh, that people can just drop by. Cool table. Discover card hashtag bonus award. It's like a gift that you can do whatever you want with, and uh, not even feel guilty. <laughs> Come find my house. It pays to discover. To apply, call 1-800. It pays to. Accepted where you see the notice sign. Brashear banks the puck in off the left ankle of Dominic Hasek. The Vancouver Canucks have a 1-0 lead, but the Buffalo Sabres are on a power play as Brian Noonan took a horrible penalty. Just pulled down for no reason. Rob Ray inside the Buffalo line. So the Sabres try again on the power play. Woolley. Flipping it up ahead on that now to Plant. Plant to the Vancouver line and over. Couldn't get the shot away. Eventually went down. And it's worked down the ice by Messier. Hashik flipping it around behind the net. Getting it up on the wing. Daw racing after it. Couldn't seem to get away. Babbage challenged him. Daw takes it back. Now Daw in over the line to Woolley. Woolley took his shot. Kicked away by Burke. Kicked in by Buffalo again. Again, it's checked and it comes to center ice. And here's Messier. Clearing it across the period. Cutting it on goal. It's just pass. It scrolls and makes the save. Worked out to center ice. Sabres coming back again. Again in over the line. He leaves it to play. Put it in front. Goal. Couldn't pick it out of the air. Here come the Canucks right back again to Linden. Coming with Babbage this time. Linden going wide. Watch by Sicknick. Linden now takes a puck in the corner. Linden slipping it all the way back to center ice. It's guided across to Olin, and Olin will flip it down the ice. 50 seconds remaining in the Buffalo Man Advantage situation. Woolley has hit a gully in the corner and leaves it back there for Shipnick. Shipnick being watched by McGillney comes away to center. Here's Shipnick to the connect line and over. Shipnick didn't get his shot away, but he still got possession of the puck. Whips it over on the other side to Pekka. He drills one that goes wide as a net. It's slipped around on the board by Vancouver to the blue line. And knocked down right at the line. And apparently it came out to center ice. Linden's got it again. Linden rolling into Buffalo zone. And the was quick shot. And he found glass with that one. And ends up going back to center and all the way into the Vancouver end. Left back there. And we fired away by Hedekin. Down to Hashik at the other end. And just as it's picked up by Buffalo Shannon, the Canucks come back to full strength. Shannon deals it in the corner. Around behind the net, recovered by McAllister, and that will be icing against Buffalo. So the Canucks do an excellent job of killing off the Buffalo opportunity on the power play. Face off back in the Sabre zone to the left of Dominic Hashik. Canucks with 18 shots on goal, Buffalo with 15. A wide open affair here tonight uh, at the Marine Midland Arena. Dominic Hashik will be leaving tomorrow for Vancouver to participate in the All-Star Game. Canucks are supposed to be leaving after the game tonight. Better permitting, of course. To head back home. 
course, he'll be playing the same team with a number of the Canucks. You mentioned yep. uh, Pavel Burry, of course, uh, he'll be there. People holding it in now is Ledyard worked it into the corner, taken away and flipped around on the board by Shannon. Now scooping it ahead. That's broken up. McAllister drills it across ice to Ledyard. Sailed ahead. McKee knocked it down. Brown couldn't get anywhere. McKee can't either, and it's kept in by Vancouver. Left off in the corner, came out in front of the net, but the Canucks will keep it in. Back to Naslin. Naslin winds up with a shot that misses the net. Steered into the corner, but kept in by the Canucks again. Try to help it in front. That's broken up. Shannon starting away. Shannon into the Vancouver zone. Back in front of the net, and Brown never got his shot away. Finally, the Canucks recover and bring it right back out again to the long pass ahead. Mogilny is denied by Smellett. He dropped it off. That's broken up. Kept in by Vancouver again. Lume goes down, but he managed to keep it in the Buffalo end. And now a pass up ahead for Ward. Too far. Goes wide with the Canuck net. And there's Noisick. Work to the line. Not out. Trilby puddle ahead to Shepard. Should have been an icing call, but the puck hit the edge of the crease. At least it looked that way. And icing was waved off. And Jason Daw ends up scoring a goal. Now Sean Burke did not signal that it should have been icing. So I believe the, that was the right call by the official. Vancouver turns the puck over and Daw guns it in. And we have a tie game with 13.40 to go. Here in the second period. What a nice play. Donald Ledet. Sliding the pass to the front and Daw shooting it high into the corner. So both goals coming here in the second period. One by each club. Plant will send it back. Here's Schmelich. Whipping it up ahead. Daw got it to Plant again. Again over the line. Took a shot, but that went wide of the net. And Brashear, he's checked from behind. Comes out in front and front is are you ready again? Awesome! And Buffalo striking quickly, taking a two to one lead. And Jason Dawes out of his slump. The goal scorers are starting to find the net for Buffalo as Dawes scores two goals on one shift, and the Sabres. Large ahead by two to one with 13.25 to go. And again, it was Donald Adet. What a great job he did behind the net. Stole the puck and sent it to the front. It was Rashur who gave up the puck to Adet and Daw gunned it home. So Brashear, I'm sorry, partner Brashear has the only goal for Vancouver, but now he's checked and gives up the puck and the Sabres take the lead. Here it's kept in again by Buffalo. Couldn't get his shot away. Back to Pekka with a shot. That one's blocked by Olin. Olin starting away to center. And then he tripped and fell. Slides in over the line. Pekka trying to take it away. Pekka takes a bump. Play is called as Ojik came over to take a run at Pekka, but it's called on the offside. So Da scores his 16th and then his 17th. Buffalo takes the lead here 2-1 to one in an exciting game. Here at the Marine Midland Arena with 13.04 remaining here in the second period. And Jason Daw was one of the guys who participated in Lindy Ruff's shooting drills. Remember, uh, we talked about that last night a couple of days ago. Lindy put three nets on the ice. Daw was out there uh, along with Donald Adet, uh, Derek Plant, uh, Holzinger was there. there about 500 pucks on the ice, and they just shot and shot. Third around on the boards now. Canucks keeping it in. Jure lost it in the corner. It hits the referee. Van Mazenhoven. They can't get it out. Now taken by Schmelich. Schmelich works it up on the wing. Sabres coming back again. Verona through center. He'll dribble wide into the corner. SCA going after it. Pumping in there with Ward. It's set off the glass and back through center ice. Schmelich catching up with it again. Twelve and a half to go here in the second period. Chipped over for Ward too far. Back in the other direction. Hit 
Chipnick is tracking it down now for Buffalo. Chipnick uses the glass off Ward's glove at center, and he carries on. Ward in over the line. Now he's trying to shut it on. Burke makes the save on Barada. Who teed it up. Here's Pekka behind the net. Pekka looking out in front. Pekka still got the puck. Leading him in front. No penalty call there. As Barada was wiped out. Back comes Vancouver. In over the line. A chance for the Canucks to shot. holding it in. That is a flex to the corner. Aslan tapping it in behind the net. It's worked around on the boards again. Ure spinning around. Watch by Zitnik. Ure still with the puck. And he lost control. But the Canucks keep it in. Step back into the corner again. Rolled around on the boards. And finally it's scooped free and set out the center by Groshek. Groshek taking it away from Sillinger. It ends up at center ice to Groshek again. Groshek curling in on the line. Quick shot that went off a leg. Tucked into the corner. Barnaby racing in there. Squeezed up by Pavich. Set around behind the net. Vancouver recovering with Naslin starting away. Naslin darts to center ice down to the Buffalo line. Watched by McKee. They're rolling into the corner. Shannon picks it away. Shannon feeding it up to Groshek on the wing. Groshek gaining center ice. He'll squeeze it in for Brown. Too far into the corner. Taken back by Olin. Groshek went firing in there. It's worked around on the board. Free by the Canucks, and they try to make, make out on a three on two. I hate the Linden in over the line. Crooked shot blocked by Shannon. Kept in at the point by Hedekin. Hedekin will put it behind the net. Hashik helps it around to the boys, but not out. Olin moving up to keep it in there. They whack out of the game. Matthias Olin got it back to Naslin. Naslin sails it into the corner to Mogilny. Mogilny twisting around. Back for Naslin with a shot. That's knocked out. It's put the head, but not out. Vancouver putting the pressure on now. Tap behind the net, and the Sabres get it back off the glass. Not out again. Olin tipping it in with a shot. The rebound in front of the net. Hashik spears it away to Brown. And it's gunned out and down the ice by Buffalo to take up the pressure. And the Canucks pick it up back. Icing Buffalo halfway through the second period. The Buffalo Sabres score two in a row, both by Jason Daw to take the lead here at the Marine Midland Arena. I know what Jeff got clothes, the hair designer underwear, you know the trip. Thin Ray, Brad, bonded with my dad, then pawns of metal. I'm on the level. off in the Buffalo end of the rink in a wide open affair here at the Marine Midland Arena. Hashik will leave it behind the net. Around the board. Oh, unable to get it out. Sheer kicking out of now. Jumped back into the corner. Linden chasing after the puck. Linden with a nice move to keep it in there. Trying to get it back to Brashear and does in the corner. Brashear trying to duck away from Primo. Primo's on him behind the net. They fight for it around on the board again. Brashear dropped it off too far for Noonan. Noonan chasing after it. He got it out to Linden again. Back to the point it comes. Kept in by Vancouver. Knocked down. The Sabres will get it away to center to Primo. Primo up on the wing. In over the line. Chapin and Primo again. Couldn't get the shot on. And Burke reaches out and hangs on to it. Now the face off back in the Vancouver zone to the left of the goaltender. Associate coach of the Buffalo Sabres, Don Lever. We mentioned that Dominic Hasek was heading to Vancouver for the All-Star Game. Well, so is Don Lever. He will represent the Vancouver alumni. They'll play a hockey game against the NHL alumni before the skills competition. And 
Watch Donnie this morning. He was down on the ice for the morning skate, and boy, I'll tell you, was he ever serious. He was, he was just storming up and down the ice and testing new sticks. He even got a new haircut, I think, too. Yeah, just wait till he gets out there and meets up with all his old buddies. Oh, I, I think the seriousness might disappear. <laughs> He'll be done with it. He says, well, thank God it's only a half-hour game, he says. <laughs> Here's Buffalo keeping it in. Snellick taking a shot. That went off a leg wide to the corner. It's kicked around to the board. Fury got it to the line. Now with a second effort, cleared the zone. Whipped by Arada through the middle again, but worked up on the wing. Snellick breaks it up. Shifting takes a peek. He tries a pass through the middle. It's taken away by Ward. Ward in over the Vancouver line. Kind of rolled it in front, broken up and cleared out again. Shifting is back there for Buffalo. Flips it up for Barado. Off his stick and down the ice. Healing it around in the board. Kicked in by Pekka. Oh, and he tried to get it in front. Barado was there. And behind the net. Pekka out in front. Ward couldn't get a shot away. Ward turns again. Took his shot. Barado's got it. Barado trying to get it back to the point. He's rushed up. Humani spins it around to the other side. It's jammed on the board. Barado keeping it in with a shot. Ward was out in front, but they couldn't get it to him. The Canucks finally have put him down the ice, and this will not be icing. I should believe it for Zitnik. Zitnik swinging up to Daw, who has the two Buffalo goals. Again, got in over the line, giving it to Platt. Platt's looking down low, squeezed out by Hedekin. Bounces behind the net, Daw's got it again. Daw, really working around on the other side to Platt. Back for Daw once again. Daw will leave it there. Around in the boards, I get knocks it free, but can't come up with the puck. Mogilny does. Mogilny a pass to center ice. What back now to Sillinger out of the line? He kicks it ahead. It's knocked down, and so is Sillinger and Buffalo coming away. Worked up in over the line to Audet. Audet looking in front of him at the play, and he couldn't get his stick on it. Chopped around in the corner. Dog shoots it in. The goaltender Burke working on the board, but Shannon's got it with a quick shot that hit a leg. Chasing after it in the corner, Sabres keeping it in, here's Audet being squeezed out, but it's kept into Audet again, Audet trying to get it in front at the side of the net, and he whacked at it, here's Audet turning again, Audet turning right in front of the shot, he fired it wide in the net, Audet's got it again in the corner, trying to leave it for Daw, jammed around on the boards, kept in by Shannon, oh these players are dead tired, slides to the open side of the ice and Buffalo makes a quick change. Head up ahead now to the Buffalo line. McKee takes it back, trying to get it to Barnaby. Leaving it for Brown. Brown pulling away from Brashear. Brown in over the line. Brown digging down low. Got it in front. The rebound. Hello, Matthew Barnaby. Barnaby jams it in. And Buffalo ups its lead to 3-1. to one. What a great play by Curtis Brown in the neutral zone. I mentioned on a couple of occasions the deceptive speed and power of Curtis Brown. He lugged the puck through the neutral zone. He was being harassed by Brashear from behind. Brown worked his way to the side of the net, and Matt Barnaby ended up with a puck in an open corner, and he found it. The Sabres jump up 3-1 to one with three consecutive goals here in the second. This line of Brown... Barnaby and Groshek have been terrific in recent games. Here's a pass coming to center. Brown's got it again. In over the Vancouver line. Works it into the corner. Burke is way out of the net. Scooped it around on the boards. Groshek keeping it in, but that's not down. Well, he took his shot. <laughs> And the forechecking of Brown, Barnaby, and Groshek pays off in a woolly slap shot goal. Great puck pursuit in the zone. Barnaby was in there. The goaltender, Burke, gave the puck away to Groshek, and it bounced back to the point man, Woolley, who gunned the shot to the front of the net. And the Sabres have a 4-1 lead with 6.31 to go here in the second period. And if Mike Keenan swore off ice as a New Year's resolution, he just broke the resolution because he's really into the ice now, and who can blame him? Looked away to center ice. Hershey trying to try it free and does. Hershey working it down low, bumping with Brashear in the corner. They grapple in there, and it's taken away now. Ledyard beating it up.
step ahead. Canucks coming back with Linden. Linden into the Buffalo zone. He turns at the line. Linden keeping it in there. Sends it to the other side. Babbage the shot. Passing the save. Rebound in front of the net. That's knocked down. Get in again by the Canucks with Noonan, leaving it to Linden. Linden turns to the point. Lume a shot. Bobbles wide of the net. Recovered by Brown. Brown is hit by Linden just as he puts it out of play. And Linden is challenged by Woolley. The Sabres, four unanswered goals in the lead. John Lithgow performs the Discover Card Dial Along song. An extemporaneous. Provided for your dialing pleasure, while you call 1-800-IT-PAYS-TO and apply for your Discover card, the card with the cashback bonus award that always <laughs> pays you back. That was a nice surprise. And that's music to everyone's ears. It pays to Discover. To apply, call 1-800-IT-PAYS-TO. Accepted where you see the Nova sign. So, you did your homework and chose the Vortec-powered, totally cool new Chevy S10 for just $169 a month. Or you could have got $1,500 cash back. Either way, friends who thought you were just smart will start calling you a genius. And why not? You landed yourself a rugged, dependable Chevy S10 and a great deal to boot. Of course, if you were a real genius, you'd invent a self-cleaning truck. Your S10's ready. Get it at your local Chevrolet dealer. Is up 4-1 here with 557 left here in this first. Mike Keenan left out the line of Noonan, Brashear, and Linden for all four goals and continue to keep them out. They did not change them as the Sabres continue to form and pound pucks on Burke. And Keenan has known publicly to go against Mr. Linden. Uh, Steel Eyes Keenan continuing to do his toughness here in this second period. Well, that's, you're right, Danny, but it's all well and good. But now he's down by three yeah, goals. That's bad coaching. Simple as that. Round on the board. Lume keeping it in the buffalo end. Lume. Sends it in front of the net. Hashik knocks it away. Fed out to center ice. Ward trying to come away. Pekka trying to gain on the play. Pekka races after it in the corner. Pekka flipping it around behind the net. Verona catching up with the puck. He left it to Ward. Ward turns again. Sending it around to Pekka. Pekka got it in front of the net. And Verona couldn't get a shot on. Up to center to Bure. Bure in over the Buffalo line. Filled it in front of the net. Went off the skate. Sabres will get it back again. Scooping it high in the air. Bouncing puck. Set in the air. Finally fed ahead. But recovered once more by Buffalo. Shitnik sending it back in the other direction. Babbage dumped it to the Buffalo line. Shitnik breaks it up again. The Canucks are making changes as they leave it for Bure. And in over the line. Pekka took it away. Peck is after it again and got it up at center to Ward. Ward will just slide it in and will head off on a change along with his teammates. Four and a half minutes remaining in the second period. The Canucks scored first in the period. Buffalo got the next four. Pass at center ice, flip in the other direction. Ray catches up with it. Ray in over the line. He leaves it to Chapin. Chapin to Primo is shot right on. Burt knocked that away. McGillney going after it. Drops it off to Olin. Puts it high in the air to clear the zone. Back at center ice, Shannon ran into his own man, left it for Ray. Ray will scoop it all the way back to McKee. He works it to Shannon. Shannon backing it off the boards to center ice, and away goes Primo. Primo for Chicane. Chicane to Primo in front, never gets the shot away. And Ray bumps with McAllister, and their lumber comes up. And it's cleared away to center ice. Brought back in now by the Crooks with a shot right on. Ray and McAllister. They're still mixing it up behind the play. Ray heading to the bench, and Chatan tears away to the Vancouver line. Bust to the outside. Chatan goes down. Penalty coming up here to Vancouver. Three and a half remaining in the second. can't be explained. Only experienced. Casino Niagara. This is the one.
3.32 left here in this second. And coming up in the second intermission, hopefully Mark Messier will join me, the captain <laughs> of the Canucks. And we'll go back to the Empire Studios, and Rick and Jim will have their analysis on this second period. Upstairs to you guys. Uh, Mark may, uh, along with the rest of the boys, be in Iron Mike's cage at the end of the period. We don't really know. Chris McAllister is the one who took the hooking penalty here. So Buffalo heads on to the power play again. Vancouver attempting to bring it out, and Lume got rid of it through center ice. Shipnik plugging it right back again. Rips it over on the wing. It went all the way to the corner. Babbage smacked it off the boards, and that goes out of play. Now it's time now for our Xerox fast fact of the evening. I'm sure it's got something to do with this hockey game. Well, the fastest two goals by one Buffalo Sabre is 10 seconds, held by two players, Derek Plant versus Los Angeles, Danny Gare versus Washington back in 1980. And tonight, Jason Daw scored in 15, or two goals in 15 seconds apart. That's a way to snap out of a slump, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Do it with a bang, and he sure did on one shift. Messier sending it away to center ice now. It'll be scooped down the ice by Lume. Minute and a half remaining in the McAllister penalty. Three minutes to go in the second period. Up on the wing it comes. Plant slides into Vancouver territory. Clears the cross ice, but it was too high for Daw. And Messier brings it back again. Messier drops it off. Shot by Dure is right on. Hash it with a save. Kicked off the board. Plant stacks back with Daw. And again. Get over the line. Plant rolling around in the corner. He's it behind the net. Daw tried to give it to Audet. It's swept around in the boards. And the Canucks will bring it out. Messier steering it ahead to Dure. Guides it across to Messier, but he was on his way to the bench. Sabre starting away. Ahead for Audet. Two-line pass upside. Jason Daw with two goals in 15 seconds to blow this hockey game wide open. And Buffalo with a 4-1 lead here with 222 and remaining in the second period. And the Vancouver Canucks now have given up 167 goals. That is the most in the National Hockey League. And Mike Keenan won a Stanley Cup with the New York Rangers. And it's okay to play wide open hockey. But with his defense, I just don't think he can do it successfully. They're very slow back there. They're not very mobile. And the Sabres have cycled the puck on him and really done a great job here in the second. He has it now. Only squeezed out to center ice. Worked across to Brown. Brown to the Vancouver line. Will chip it in. Ocean oh, tried to catch up with it. It's tapped around on the boards. Kept in there by Brown. Brown bumping with Olin. They go to the boards together. Barnaby scooped it free, but Ocean lost his stick. Came back to the point to McCann to the other side. The shot off the glass. Held in by Buffalo. Roshik throws it across the ice. Another shot by Schmelick in a leg. Barnaby keeping it in. Barnaby to Schmelick. Tried to get it back to Barnaby and went to center. And now Schmelick will take a penalty for knocking down Linden. Now two minutes for tripping. In 10 seconds, the Canucks will go on the power play. And you almost feel that they have to get back in this game or score a goal before the end of this period if they're going to have any chance of catching Buffalo. The play happened or the penalty happened at the Vancouver blue line. Now like two minutes for tripping. And the faceoff is right between the blue lines or between the Buffalo blue line and the center ice line. That's between the blue lines. Yeah, I guess I, <laughs> I wanted to be a little more specific. <laughs> Just narrowed it. On the, on the horns of a dilemma, on the horns of the buffalo. <laughs> exactly. Right on the point, to be more precise. Brother, are we picking? <laughs> you tell us the last game before the All-Star oh, yes. break, folks. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, rest, oh, rest, rest. rest. And now Vancouver coming back to first full strength. The mill go to the man advantage situation. In over the line. Messier took his shot. Has it kicked it away. Pekka tried to scoop it out. Picked up in the corner. And here's Ward with time and tapping it down the ice. A little over a minute to go in the second period. Messier leading the rush away again. Up the middle of Fiore, but he stepped in over the line and he's nailed in the upside play it just didn't work out uh, Pavel very so quick and talented 
27 goals, tied for third overall in the NHL. Marc Messier, though, has scored, well, 590 goals, to be exact, uh, 10 short of 600, and I'll tell you what, he has scored a lot of goals from the off wing. He shoots off the off foot. In other words, a uh, left-handed shot, he balances on the left skate, lifts the right skate, and takes the wrist shot. And boy, he has scored a lot of goals from in that position using that shot. Missed the playoffs only once in his 18 NHL seasons. Gure inside his own line, drops it off, then accepts a return pass. And now we're down to about a minute remaining in the second period. Messier pulls his way free, stolen away by Plant. Not recovered again by the Canucks. Oh, this has got to be a deliberate offside. They're not going to call it the deliberate offside. Matthias Poland looked down the ice into the Buffalo end, saw his teammate deep in the Sabre zone, and fired it in. That's an intentional offside. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, the Sabres are trying to, well, the Sabres are arguing about it now. Yeah. I, I don't blame them. And, uh, the linesman, I mean, all he has to do is say, well, I didn't see him. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one way of it. Mark Messier with 39 points in 45 games. We were talking about the only time he missed NHL playoffs in 18 seasons. That was the year after the New York Rangers won the Stanley Cup. And here come the Bure bringing it back again. Bure wings it in over the line. Took his shot. Hashik kicked it away and it's picked up by Ward. Ward, bothered by McGilney, sends it down the ice and McGilney and Ward clash with the lumber up. Half a minute to go in the period. Stepped up ahead and worked to Messier again. Messier brings it in over the line. That's broken up, and here's Pekka to send it away. And Kluber trying to get it going again. Messier guides it in over the line. Scoop to the boards. Back it comes to the point. Lume feeding it in. Kept in there. Maslin got it to Lume. He got checked. Got it back again. Over he comes to Maslin. Into the corner. They fire it through the goal crease. Worked around on the other side. The second period comes to an end. That was a very important penalty kill for Buffalo. The last minute and 40 seconds or so of the period. The Sabres do a great job. and The score remains Buffalo 4, Vancouver 1. And when the third period gets underway, still 19 seconds remaining in the Schmelick penalty. But all the scoring coming here in the second period. Getting ready for All-Star Weekend in... Mark Messier's home ring. And Dominic Hashik will be front and center. In a GMC Yukon, every day brings something to look forward to. Uh, looks like a little snow today. For the most horsepower in its class and auto track four-wheel drive, Yukon may change the way you feel behind the wheel. See your Empire State GMC dealers today. At PC Assistance, we're proud that the Buffalo Sabres call us their preferred computer consultants. We're also very proud to be considered the preferred computer consultants for many companies in Western New York. PC Assistance offers a full range of professional services that are designed to assist you in maximizing the use of your computer systems. PC Assistants can easily become the preferred computer consultants for your company, too. For the first time ever, the coolest game becomes an international showdown on NHL All-Star Weekend. Saturday, it's the Norelco Super Skills on ESPN, where the world's best skaters and goalies will be crowned. We're in trouble. Then, a prelude to the Olympics, as North America's All-Stars take on the World All-Stars in the 48th NHL All-Star Game on Fox. 48th NHL All-Star Game on Fox, January 18th, NHL All-Star Saturday, January 17th. Welcome back to Marine Midland Arena, where the Sabres lead 4-1 after two periods. I'm with the captain here of the Vancouver Canucks, Mark Messier, and Mark... One of the things your hockey club has struggled all season long is giving up uh, a lot of goals against. What do you have to do to correct that? Well, pretty well A to Z right now. We're giving up all kinds of different kinds of goals, shorthanded, uh, power play, even strength. Uh, on the rush, defensive zone coverage, uh, pretty much uh, we're giving up all types of goals, so obviously it's a problem. You've played 18 years in the National Hockey League. Uh, is this the toughest test for you or the biggest challenge for you to turn this organization around? 
Well, that's hard to say. I think, uh, you know, uh, obviously we've got a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, we don't play 47 or 48 games in the year and have the record we do if there aren't some uh, things that need to be addressed. But uh, I think uh, it's important to look at all the positive things in the organization as well and uh, not get too caught up in all the negativity. Mark, Mike Keenan came aboard uh, about a month ago. Can you talk a little bit about what he brings to the, this hockey club? Well, I think he brings a winning program. I think he brings a winning attitude. Uh, he won't settle for losing. Uh, nothing but the best from each and every individual in each and every given night is uh, what he expects. It, uh, it's a tough program to play under, but uh, obviously one that's successful. I, I know that you're heading home to see the family and enjoy the All-Star break. Thanks for your time, Mark. Thank you. Mark Messier, fourth leading scorer of all time in the National Hockey League, and we'll be back after this timeout. local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Hi, I'm Danny Gare for M Wild, where you can save up to 50% on an incredible selection of clothing and accessories for men. I've hung up my old uniform and now I suit up for my new profession. At M Wild, the selection and service fit me to a T. Choose from such famous brands as Pierre Cardin, Dino Cerruti, Perry Ellis, Racket Club and more. So take it from me, Danny Gare. M. Wild will suit you too. M. Wild, Buffalo's fashion outlet. Get yourself a piece of Buffalo Sabres action at the Sabres store at Marine Midland Arena, where you'll find the best selection anywhere of official Buffalo Sabres merchandise. From Pro 8 CCM game worn jerseys to a huge selection of apparel, gift items, and more, you'll find it all at the Sabres store. Visit us on weekdays 10 till 5 or at a Sabres home game. You can also see Sabres merchandise on the internet or call us. Wear what the workforce wears. Shop where the workforce shops. The Sabres store at Marine Midland Arena. Everybody wants to be a winner. Everybody wants to know the score. They're watching Fan TV. Talking sports with you and me. Come on, everybody. Let's get in the Fan TV. Your voice. Good evening, I'm Mike DeGeorge, and this is an Umpire Sports Report update. Just two other games in the NHL tonight in Washington, the Caps hosting the Hawks. Second period, game going to be tied when Craig Berube has this one go in off his chest, a tie in the game at one. And then a little bit later on in the second period, the Caps would take the lead. Andre Nikolishin scoring off uh, former Sabre goalie Andre Trefilov, that making it 2-1. Alexei Jamnov has scored his second of the game for the Blackhawks, and the game right now is tied 2-2 in the third period. Colorado, an early goal. They lead the Sharks 1-0 in the first. Coming up on the full 30-minute edition of the Empire Sports Report, we'll hear from the Sabres GM as the team hits the All-Star break. Also coming up, the stars out in New York City tonight, and that includes former Bills quarterback Jim Kelly. It's all for a good cause, and we'll have the story coming up. Also coming up at 11.30, we'll have the latest on the Bills coaching staff and the latest on the situation with Doug Flutie. Right after tonight's game, it's Hockey Hotline with Mike and Brian. For now, it's back to the arena and tonight's third period. A special announcement. West Coast weather conditions caused by El Nino may result in severe winter weather in the metropolitan area. Because Nissan inventories must be reduced before the blizzard of 98 arrives, Nissan is now offering $2,000 cash back when you purchase or lease any new 98 Pathfinder or Maxima, as well as a special lease deal on the new 98 Altima. But you must act before January 19th. Get $2,000 cash back while supplies last. Nissan's Blizzard 98 sales event ends January 19th. 
The M&T Bank Big Four Basketball Series is rolling through downtown Buffalo. Here we go. Catch all the exciting action of college basketball as Canisius and Niagara welcome top opponents from the back to the Marine Midland Arena. Tickets are priced from $8 to $25 and available at the Arena Box Office. All fantastic locations or by calling 888-4000. January 17th, Canisius versus Loyola. And January 19th, a Mac doubleheader. Yanni, live in concert with his band and symphony orchestra in a spectacular new show. A compelling and moving musical experience you'll remember forever. Yanni, live, one night only, Saturday, February 7th at Marine Midland Arena. A night of favorites and music from his new album, Tribute. Reserve seat tickets are available now at all Fantastics outlets or charged by phone. Don't miss the timeless music of Yanni. Saturday mornings on the Empire Sports Network, bowling is the name of the game. We start with the kids at 10 a.m. on the Pepsi Funtime Junior Bowling Show. Don't let the youngsters fool you. We'll have some great shots and a lot of fun along the way. Then at 11 o'clock, the best bowlers in Western New York hit the approach. Each week, four bowlers vie for the title and the $400 top prize on the Tops TV Challenge. From the kids to the adults, bowling is big on the Empire Sports Network. An explosion of goals in the second period. Vancouver got the first one, but Buffalo got the next four for a four to one lead after two here at the marine midland arena and i have to tell you folks that uh, my wife sandra who i call cupcake decided that she would make me a christmas present this year and uh, we have suspenders folks <laughs> Boy, do we ever. And there, I love it. So let's, upstairs where Mama hides the cookies, you got cupcake there, a shot. Oh, sorry, am I getting a shot? No, you got to say shot. Oh, I can't just do that one. Let me see, uh, what do we got on the back oh, here? Oh, we turn around here? Uh, okay, okay, here we turn around here. Top shelf where Mama hides the cookies there. That, call a cop. There that is. Uh, I oh, I love this one. Uh, I love my producer and director. <laughs> that's, that's one of my favorites, but that's really nice. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, it's different, that's for sure. If you ever tried to buy novelty suspenders, you know how difficult it is, and I, I thank her very much for doing that. And I know that uh, at this moment, the Buffalo Sabres are looking ahead to the All-Star break and a day or two off, but boy, oh boy, they sure looked ahead to period number two and what happened in it. Boy, did they ever. Of course, uh, Vancouver scored first. Buffalo roared back with four unanswered goals. How about this play? Uh, Donald Adet feeding Jason Daw with a beautiful pass. And Daw puts it exactly where he should, upstairs where Mama hides the cookies. Here's a great play by Adet behind the net as he picks the puck away from Brochure. How about this pass? Directly across the goal crease. And there's Dawson uh, banging in a goal, his second of the night. And then Curtis Brown with a terrific play to go to the outside. And Matthew Barnaby finds a loose puck in front and jams it in the open side. Buffalo up 3-1. to one. And then it was Jason Woolley from the left point. A bouncing puck that found its way through sticks and shin pads and through the legs of the goaltender, Sean Burke. And the Discover Card scoring summary is top-heavy. Donald Brashear getting his third, but then the Sabres with Daw two in a row. And after that, the Sabres getting two more before the period was over. Barnaby and Woolley and Buffalo enjoying a... 4-1 to one lead at the end of two periods of play. This game is far from over. Uh, there's no doubt about that, and I think that uh, Mr. Keenan's tongue will be working <laughs> overtime between periods. Yeah, I, I think so, uh, and uh, I, what we may see is a couple of players even, maybe even being benched here. Uh, he's been known to do that and to pull the goaltender on top of it, but against a team like Vancouver with the Messiers and Burries and Mogilneys, uh, you cannot relax. Uh, one goal, uh, that could get him going again, and and uh, you must be continue to play, I think, a strong defensive game. I think that's what the Buffalo coaches are going to stress. Say, look, don't lay back and let Vancouver uh, continually uh, come at you. Try to be aggressive, but at the same time, make sure you're not cut out of position. This is a copyrighted production of Niagara Frontier Hockey LP. It's intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. Any other use without the prior express written consent of Niagara Frontier Hockey LP is prohibited. After two here at the Marine Midland Arena, the Buffalo Sabres are in front by three, four to one, over the Vancouver Canucks. Customer you have called is unavailable or has traveled outside the coverage area.
Hey, with a 98 Ford Ranger's re-engineering, increased power, and enhanced design, they could be beyond anyone's coverage. And right now, a 98 Ranger 4x4 also comes with $12.50 cash back when you buy your 24-month red carpet lease. So see your Western New York and Northern Pennsylvania Ford dealer today. Please try your call again later. Better make that much later. This is what it is all about. Who wants another Cold War? Well, I'm just, I mean, I want to see the game. Sorry, fellas, there is no football this week. What? Now what are we going to do? Abduction? Done that. Uh, who's Area 51? Uh, again. Check out Alien Invasion Week on TLC. New investigations, new evidence. TLC is really on the ball. Alien Invasion Week, hosted by Third Rock Swing Stewart. All next week, beginning Sunday at 9 on TLC. When it comes to choosing the right motor oil, let's make something perfectly clear. Introducing three new oils from Quaker State, specially formulated for the vehicle you drive. Synthetic blends for hard-working engines and high-horsepower engines. A full synthetic for ultimate engine protection. Extra filtered with patented Micro-Q filtration to ensure your oil starts clean for a difference you can see and trust. So when it comes to protecting your vehicle, why take a chance? Quaker State. The choice is clear. They're really your employees, but they feel a lot like your family. You're fond of many of them, and accustomed to the rest of them. And for almost 60 years, GHI has been helping employers like you give their employees the kind of health care they want. Employees get direct access to doctors and hospitals throughout New York State, and you get a reasonable price tag for it all. GHI. We put the care back in health care. Jeff's Restaurant has been run by the Billeteer family since 1951, and today the tradition of serving fine Italian cuisine continues. Owner Lou Billeteer and his daughter Mary Beth welcome you to their new banquet room. From wedding receptions to bridal showers, strictly Italian dishes or wide variety dining, you'll enjoy Chef's Restaurant. At Chef's, they work hard to maintain the quality and service you deserve. To reserve your next gathering, call Chef's Restaurant, 856-9187. Sabres Hockey is brought to you in part by the new Dodge. Be your friendly Dodge dealer near you. By McDonald's. Did somebody say McDonald's? And by Bud Ice and Bud Ice Light, the official beer sponsors of the NHL. The Marine Midland Arena on a snowy night here in Buffalo, 4-1 to one after two periods of play. Shots 26-24 to 24 in favor of Vancouver. Faceoff 21-18 to 18 Vancouver. Scoring chances 9-6 to six in favor of the Buffalo Sabres. Our Manhattan Bagels in period scoring summary. Or after two period scoring summary. Jason Daw with the two goals tonight. Uh, it's funny, isn't it, the way goal scorers uh, operate? Uh, Daw had, what, two goals? Two or 23 games, and out here tonight, one shift in the second period, he scores twice. And in 15 seconds. Yeah, in 15 <laughs> seconds. In the economy of time. And the Vancouver Canucks, of course, one of the, well, the, the worst defensive team in the league, have allowed four or more goals in six of the last ten games, and that happens, uh, you're not going to win, and that's why their record is one uh, seven and three. And they'll start now with a power play with ten seconds left in the Schmelick penalty. Tucked in the Buffalo corner. Can around on the boards. Checked in there. Now flipped out to the point. There's nobody there. And it goes to center ice. Pekka racing after it. Here comes Ward. And over the line to Schmelick walking in. Who can shut it down? Pekka made the play going into the zone. Dixon Ward did a great job of drawing Mark Messier with him. Richard Smelik jumped up on the play. Sean Burke, the goaltender, went down too soon. And Smelik lifted the puck over the shoulder of the goaltender. And Buffalo goes up by 5-1 to one with 19.34 to go. 
in the third period. And keep in mind, Vancouver scored the first goal of this game in the second period. Now the Canucks working it ahead again. Hedekin got it in over the line. Not free by Naslin. He's still got the puck in the corner. Naslin dumps it off, gives it away to McKee. McKee feeding it off the board. Naslin keeping it in. Shannon catches up with it behind the net. Shannon trying to shovel it along the boards, ran into the referee. There's a shot, and Hashi kicks that away. McKee works it ahead. It's kicked to the blue line and out to center ice to Audette. Audette swings it to Plant and over the line, racing it after it. Plant got turned around in the corner by Nasland. And back behind the net, and I'm taking it out. We've got another opportunity here with Olin. Olin bothered by Audette, almost stole the puck away from him. Olin going after it again. Got his fire as center. Works it back through the middle. Brought to the Buffalo Blue Line. Taken away. And left there for the Sabres. And back in again. Here's Bookner trying to get free. Bookner banked it off the boards to center ice. Primo couldn't reach it. Recovered by Brashear. Brashear getting it over the line. Knocked away from him. He goes after it again. It's picked to Lindham. Turned it wide of the net. Round on the boards. Comes out in front the shot. The Canucks appreciates that one. What a great stop by Dominic Hashik. Point blank, flat shot. Hashik snares it with the left glove. And Ledger thought he had a goal. Boy, oh boy, what a marvelous save by the Dominator. On the seat of his pants, doing the splits or the half splits, and the puck goes into the catching mitt of the goaltender. The Canucks. 29 shot on goal, and Hasek has stopped 28 of them. Linden knocking it back to the point. The shot gets knocked down, and Barnaby will sail it across to Groshek. Groshek being challenged in his own end, leaves it to Woolley. Woolley turns around. This gets rid of it through center ice. McAllister for Vancouver, flipping it ahead. Up for Brashear. Brashear will get it to Linden and over the blue line. Linden looking in front of the net. That's knocked down, and the Sabres bring it back again with a pass to Barnaby. Barnaby slipping in over the line. Barnaby looking in front of the net, trying to dump it through, can't do it. Vancouver starting back. McAllister for Brashear. He takes the long shot. That goes way wide. Recovered by Barnaby. Watched by Brashear. Barnaby around behind the net. Now he'll flip it and send it out to center ice. Sabres are trying to make a change, and will do so right now. Babbage starting back. Guns one in. Hashik slowed it down. Chops it off the glass behind the net. Schmelich feeds it back in the other direction. Schmelich attempted to catch up with it, but it's kept in by Ojek, and now Verona got rid of it to center ice. Savage works it through the middle. Back misses everybody down the ice. Hashik comes out to play it to Isaac. Schmelich around to Verona. Three minutes into the third period. Verona took a bump. It's recovered again by Buffalo. Schmelich can't get it out, however, and Pekka tries it free. Pekka got it up on the boards to center ice. Worked across ice. Swung right back in again by Sketcher. That's offside. The Sabres, the only goal here in the third. Up by four. How long does it take to turn the new Dodge Durango from the sport utility with the most passenger room in its class into the one with the most cargo room? Not long enough. Durango, new ground for the new Dodge. 8488 that Mickey sees, and I like it. 8488 Mickey sees, this is the place. McDonald's introduces eight great menu items for 88 cents each every day. A double hamburger, chicken McNuggets, fries, shakes, sundaes, and breakfast stuff. Just 88 cents each. 8488 at Mickey sees, and I like it. Did somebody say McDonald's? Eight great menu items for 88 cents each.
dropped the puck near center ice. It's tipped across by Hedekin and flipped in to the Buffalo corner. Schmelich will get there first. Schmelich sending it up on the boards, working it to center ice. That's knocked down. Barada now rolls it ahead, but too far for Ward. In the corner, Olin. Followed by Ward. Comes around on the board. Barada stepped into Olin. Barada almost got free. Barada's after it again, racing into the corner after the puck and flipping it behind the net. Chip to the other way with Bure got hauled down by Messier. You can kill to Pepper Oland. And it's cleared up the center. Oh, no. Here comes Hedekin. Hedekin came over and mugged Verona. Hedekin went head hunting on Verona. And he cut it dead. And Peck and Messier are still shoving at one another. The two captains out there center ice. Well, Hedekin just closed line back left Verata. He was upset because Verata hit Oland hard into the glass. A clean check by Verata. And Hedigan just attacked him. He ought to be out of the game for that. He ought to be gone. We shall see what the referee decides on Van Mansenhoven. Uh, Hedekin is heading toward the dressing room. I was mentioning, uh, partner, last night that Vaclav Verada, as Hedigan gets patted by his teammates for sticking up for uh, Olin, but Verada got a haircut. And I saw him in an elevator with Donald Adet, and I wondered who he was. And of course, I'm used to seeing him in long hair, and he got initiated is what happened. The players cut his hair. That was a nice, really clean hit by Verada inside the zone. And no penalty. You no notice penalty. the referee's arm was not up. Yeah, and then and then Hedigan just clotheslined Verada from behind. Verada just finished his check. And, and then he got attacked by Hedigan. The forearm of the left arm of Hedigan just under the neck of Verada. And Dixon Ward did a good job of helping out as he got in there in a hurry. Ward's gone to the dressing room, so is Hedigan. A five-minute major penalty on the board for Hedigan. That, uh, I'm sure, will carry a game misconduct. And Dixon Ward has two minutes. And we would assume uh, also, well, let's wait for the announcement, but he may be getting third man in on that play. I didn't hear what this major is for, though. I, I, this is going to be an interesting call. Now, the referee's still over at the penalty timekeeper bench, and now he skates away. And we'll listen for the announcement. Buffalo in the lead by 5-1. to one. They scored four last night at Maple Leaf Gardens. And they better that so far here tonight. And there's still 16-10 to go in regulation. Boy, there were a lot of people held up by the weather outside because when this game started, there were an awful lot of empty seats. There are not very many now. Well, the faceoff is outside the Vancouver Blue Line. Buffalo will go on the, or no, wait a minute, we'll play four aside here for two minutes, and then Sabres will work on a three-minute power play. They still haven't made the announcement here yet. Somebody has to come over and serve Hedekin's penalty, and that is, the role is being filled right now. Now, Verratti, you have to like the way he plays. He's aggressive. He hasn't scored yet. The Sabres were hoping he could add some offense, but... He certainly has no problem going into the corners and fighting up along the board. Hedekin's going to get five minutes for fighting. He didn't see any punches throw. He saw a buggy. Here comes Messier away to center ice now. Messier battled in over the line to Babbage, looking for Messier in front, but it's taken away. Chitnik sending it up on the wing. The pass through the middle. In over the line. Pekka tried to get it back, but it ends up at center ice. Shitnik spinning away from Messier. Shitnik got it to Shatan. He'll belt one in. Pekka keeping it in there. Plugs it in the other direction. Babbage collects the puck in the corners. Now whipped up on the wing and stolen away again by Buffalo. Shatan hustling after the puck. Cut off along the wall by Nasli. Put back in the corner. And with the cross ice. Bure spins with a nifty move and then overskates the puck. Oh, and Shatan almost walked in all alone. Shannon back at center ice. Giving it to Shipnick to Shannon again. Five minutes into the third period. Shannon still cruising around in his own end. Finds Shipnick. 
Flipping it up ahead, but it went behind Plank. Canucks come up with it again. Work for Ledyard. Ledyard slipping it across ice. That's banked off the board. Back for Ledyard again. Intercepted by Plant. He got flattened by Maslund. It's cleared in over the line. Vancouver keeping it in, but now it squirts out to center right. They jam on the boards again. Mogilny has it. Mogilny, the Buffalo line, left it there, and Plant said, thank you. Dumps it ahead to center for Shannon. Shannon working it back to Plant. Plant can't catch up with the puck. It's taken away by Ledyard. Rolling behind the net, tipped into the corner, Olin going after it. He got checked, now he recovers again, now he goes down again, and Buffalo changes. Brent Ledyard once more for Vancouver. Up the middle to Linden. Linden to the Buffalo line, gets over the line, lost control, pops in front of the net, as he knocked it away, Linden keeping it in there. Linden sending it back to Lume with a shot, as he kicked that away. Set around on the boards, Canucks trying to keep it in. Woolley knocked it free, Brown stacks away. To Zipnik, up on the wing it comes to Barnaby. Barnaby works to the corner, puts it back to Ray. Ray racing behind the net, charges after it again. Shovels it back to Zipnik. He feeds it into Brown in the corner. Got it to Ray again. Ray in behind the net, cycles it to Barnaby. Tried to dump it out in front. Bounces in the air. Ray knocked it away the backhand. Wide of the net as Woolley let it go. Get around on the boards. Linden to Lume, scooping it to the blue line. Not out. Buffalo keeping it in again. Back for Zipnik. Zipnik rolling around. And it comes to Barnaby. Barnaby didn't get a shot away. Back for Zipnik. Let's go. He faked it. Here's Zipnik again. Clear it in front. Oh, and it just missed the post. Set around now to Barnaby. Barnaby holding it in top of the circle. Buffalo to an advantage. Barnaby took his shot. It skips into the corner. And it's chucked off the board. Barnaby holding it in at the point. Barnaby looks again. He's got Zipnik open and gives it to him. Zipnik drills one up the side of the net. And Linden finally sends it down the ice. A minute and a half remaining in the penalty. McKee. To it. Back for Jay McKee again. Tips it up at center to Pekka. Pekka got in over the line. He got checked by Ledyard and it's fed out to Bure. Bure hitting the Buffalo line. Trying to go long. He's taken down by McKee. Hooked around into the corner. They jam it on the boards. So Don't get tangled up in there. Bure picking it free. Goes after it. And the puck ends up back at center ice. And now there's going to be a penalty coming up here. And it's going to go to Buffalo. Olin feeding it up on the wing. This will deflect the center. And the Sabres are going to get nailed down. Well, the referee missed this. Jay McKee deserved a penalty. No question. As he went after Bury, Bury just took a stick and swung it at him. And he just missed him. And that, the referee simply missed the retaliation from Burry. Certainly McKee roughed him up right at the Buffalo bench, but Burry separated and then swung a stick at McKee. And it's time now for our Aflac trivia question and answer of the evening. But the score, Buffalo in the lead by 5-1. to one. Gino Ojek led the NHL last season with 371 penalty minutes. Who is the other Canuck to lead the NHL in that department? And the answer is Tiger Williams, of course. 343 penalty minutes back in the 1980-81. There's a familiar place for Gino Ojek as he's sitting in the penalty box once again for Vancouver. Well, Burry got away with one on that play. As McKee ends up in the penalty box. Bucks with 27 penalty minutes tonight. Buffalo, 26. Two. Are challenging for the lead here. Here's Olin sending it in behind the net, so each team still a man short. Olin didn't get it out! Well, he was all good lucky and he's down! Olin went down! Ah, did took advantage! It's 6 to 1, Buffalo! And Donald Adet saying, hey folks, it's easy to score goals. He got one last night in Toronto. He gets another one here tonight. And again, the goal scorers are finding the target for Buffalo. And what a huge difference that makes in a hockey game. But the giveaway. Olin gives the puck away. And Donald Adet puts a terrific move on the goaltender. Faked it to the backhand, went the forehand, and slid it into the empty net. 6-1 Sabres. 11.48 to go in the third period. Not a power play goal, not a shorthanded goal. Both teams, a man short. 
Woolley slides it back into his own end. It'll be worked away to center ice by Shannon. He tips it in. Burke leaving it behind the net, fed around to the boards. Babbage coming up with it in the corner, watched by Plant. Sends it around to Lume. Long pass through the middle, but Woolley takes it away. Woolley pick his way out of his own zone, sends it through the middle to Plant. Plant in over the line to Audette. Audette setting his puppy shot it on. Burke makes the save. As Audette turned it in there. Well, speared back into the corner again, recovered, and Vancouver's on the power play. It's kicked down the ice into the buckle and Ash it way in with it. Oh, and Ochik went after Hashik. Now Schmelik goes after him. Everybody piling in there now. Ochik just drew a bead on Hashik and went right at him. And the Sabres, I'm sure, are happy to restrain themselves on the bench from coming over the boards after Gino Ochik. Hashik's all right. He's back in the crease. Well, that was just a cheap shot. That was totally unnecessary. Ojek had one thing in his mind, and that was to hit Hashik, and that's what he did. He went right over him. He didn't even think of trying to avoid him. He didn't care about the puck. Absolutely didn't care whatsoever. And Ojek, uh, once again, is back in the penalty box, uh, or he may be in the dressing room. Uh, if he's not in the yeah, dressing room, be. I mean... That's a, that's a deliberate attempt to injure, as far as I'm concerned, on that play. Well, the three officials are going to talk it over. Not even close. I mean, I mean Dominic Ashe came out just and just tipped the puck back into the corner, and Ojek ran right over top of him. And, of course, immediately Richard Schmelich and company, the rest of the Sabres, went after Ojek. Well, if this is the way Vancouver's been playing, no wonder they're losing. Oh, yeah. Uh, they Stupid. Lack of effort tonight, uh, lack of discipline, and... Now Mike Keenan has been a great coach in the National Hockey League, but he does not have the attention of this hockey club. No matter which way you, you butter the bread, these players are not listening. and not responding. Dominic Hasek, as Rick said, is okay, and you always hold your breath in those situations. Dominic had just, like, tipped the puck away from Ojek. And so, in other words, he was very, very vulnerable, out of position, and he got clobbered by Ojek. Well, Ojik is out of the box now, and he is being escorted to the dressing room. Making all kinds of threatening gestures. But... Now, Gino Ojik, uh, who wears number 29 for the Vancouver Canucks, 6'3", 210 pounds. We mentioned earlier he led the NHL in penalty minutes last year with 371. Earlier this season, he had 29 minutes of penalties uh, versus the Dallas Stars in one game. And Ojek is pointing at Jay McKee. And, of course, that's because McKee roughed up uh, Pavel Burry over by the Buffalo bench. But McKee's already in the penalty box, so Ojek wasn't going to get to him. And that Schmelich is also sent to the dressing room. And Shannon, who was in the penalty box, is sent to the Buffalo players bench. Not sure what's going on there, unless Shannon's on his way uh, to the dressing room, too. I think so. How can they both be going on? Well, I think, yeah, you're right, because the coach is now calling the linesman over and saying, what's going on here? And Shannon's coming back onto the ice. So, Daryl Shannon's getting tired just skating <laughs> back and forth here. He's coming back to the penalty box again. Come on, guys, make up your mind, he's saying. <laughs> here are the penalties. Buffalo penalty to number 42, Richard Smelling. Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Buffalo penalty to number 8, Daryl Shannon. Two minutes for roughing. Vancouver penalty to number 29. Well, after all of that, uh, nothing is going to obscure the fact that Buffalo is leading this game 6-1 to one with 11 minutes left on the clock in the third period. Uh, Lindy Ruff wanted his hockey club to work. Vancouver down low. That was one of his keys for tonight. And Lindy was saying, yeah, Mike Keenan's hockey team has some great forwards, but we feel that they're vulnerable on defense, and the Sabres have exposed that vulnerability tonight in a big way, scoring six times. And there's still 10.59 remaining. Now, the Sabres are going to be two men short here. Vancouver won. 
Messier's back on the ice tonight, along, or now with McGillney and Burry and Oland also out there for Vancouver. Puck out for Buffalo. Buffalo's also in a delayed penalty situation here, too, with the three players in the penalty box, all with penalty time charged against them. Now let be Bugner, Zipnik, and Pekka for Buffalo. So Messier and Pekka, the two captains who have been facing off against one another, will do it again. Shannon will not begin until the one to McKee ends. Messier keeping it in the Buffalo end, works down low, looking in front, sending it back to the point of Bure. Bure swinging around, has Messier open, lets his shot go, has it to save. Messier collecting it again, keeping it in for Vancouver to Bure. Back to Messier, works it on the other side, taken by Oland. Oland swings it across to Messier. Messier down low to Bure again. Bure in behind the net. So McGillney up camp beside the net. Bure giving it to Messier. Messier is denied. Still hanging on the puck. Winding up and shooting one. And that one gets blocked right to the boards. They jam at it again. Bugner can't get the puck. It's tipped in there. Here's Olin taking a shot. Sashik makes the save. And Pekka swings it off the glass and down the ice. We talked about Dominic Hasek, how good he is down low. What a great example he showed us of using his pads and his feet again to stop Olin. Mogelny to the Buffalo line, leaving it for Messier. He'll work it across ice. Sent to Lume. Dropping it off now to Bure. Over to Lume again. Lume took a screenshot. Hasek got that away. Jammed around to the boards. Vancouver keeping it in. Fed to the other side. Bure's got it again. Bure retreating to the point. Still hanging on to the puck. Into the corner it comes. McGillie is shot. That's knocked down. And it's set back down the ice by Buffalo. Sabres making some more changes. Back comes Bure. He's been out there a long time. In over the Buffalo line. Bure will hold the puck at the point again. Has Lume open, but he likes to hang on. Now put it in front of the net. Comes to Lume, to Bure again. Bure keeping it in for Vancouver. He clears it in beside the net. Messier got it out in front. And it jumps over a stick and goes down the ice. Bure back after it again. Buffalo makes a change. 45 seconds left in the Shannon penalty. Messier coming in over the line. Messier got it in front. The shot right off. And it's taken away. And now Buffalo starting back with a pass up to Shannon. Shannon comes in over the line. He doesn't get a shot away. He tucks it in behind the net. Work back into the corner and recovered by Naslund. Naslund sending it to Messier. Vancouver captain coming through center ice. Dropped it off. Naslund spins in over the line. He's checked by Shannon. Naslund up to it again. Rolled it around to the boards, but it's cleared out by Buffalo. And sent inside Vancouver territory, allowing both teams to make changes. A little over eight minutes remaining here in this third period. Here he comes to center, tips it into Olin. Olin dropped it back, broken up to center ice. On deck, got it to Pekka, pushed it in. Here's Pekka walking in the shot. He fired it wide, but there's going to be a pump penalty here on Buffalo for hooking. Yeah, well, D Donald Adep tried to help out Michael Pekka and really didn't have to as he hooked down Olin inside the Vancouver line to give Pekka the breakaway, but I think Pekka would have been in alone anyway. And Donald uh, got caught by the referee. There, that was a, that was a fair call on Donald Adet. Is he certainly hooked down the Vancouver defenseman? And the Sabers gained control of the puck or chipped the puck out across the blue line, and Adet took the penalty. Well, the faceoff now outside the Vancouver blue line. Sabers in the lead here at the Marine Midland Arena. Six to one. Um, Jason Daw with a couple of goals tonight. He scored those goals in the second period, 15 seconds apart. Dominic Hasek, uh, terrific again with 35 shots on goal, 34 saves. So both of these teams are shorthanded again, and both about the same amount of time remaining in the penalties. Coming away to center. He got checked at center, but he locked it for Lindy. Lindy is squeezed out, taken back by 
by Woolley. Coming away for Buffalo. Three on two. Woolley swings it over the line. The shot by Dawn. That skips off the stick and goes out of play. 7.36 left on the clock here in the third period. Vancouver got the first goal of the game. Buffalo has scored the last six. What's it coming, boss? We're coming. Don't obstruct up! Move it! Yeah. Move the puck! I've never changed my mind. You get two. You get two. No! 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 Yes. I don't know your name, but I can tell you something. Tired of getting thrown out yet? If you keep holding the way you're holding, you're gonna sit there for the rest of the game. Keep it going! Keep it going! You! Drop it! Get in there and shut up! Keep it going! Keep it going! That's all! That's all! Did you like that? Fuck oh, that. Did you know Buffalo Hardwood has one of the largest selections of hardwood flooring in the USA? Buffalo Hardwood offers award-winning installation and professional advice for do-it-yourselfers. We have monthly installation demonstrations for hardwood flooring and original Pergo. Buffalo Hardwood also has everything you need to take care of your floors. Call 651-WOOD for our next installation demonstration. Buffalo Hardwood. We'll show you how. Mike looks a little bit rusty. I, yeah. I think that pretty well sums it up. You would add a few more uh, adjectives in there, too, the way he looks tonight. Or the way he feels, let's put it that way. He always seems to look the same. Got about a five-hour plane ride ahead of them, too, or, or better. I don't think I'd want to be on that flight, mm -hmm. would you? Ledyard now trying to get away at center. Hits it across the Linden. Linden putting shot high. Hashik knocking that down. Linden kicking it free to Ledyard. Another long shot. Hashik knocks it away to Woolley. Squeezing it up as far as center ice. It's dished across for Shitnik. Shitnik throws it shot wide of the net. Shitnik catching up with it. Feeding it around to Primo in the corner. Primo checked by Ledyard. Ledyard then is... Losing it in the corner, it's rolled around to the boards. Primo after it again, back to the point, that's knocked down. And Linden stacks away to McGilney. McGilney, wheeling it through center ice, he's into the line now, trying to cut in on goal as Olin, he gets checked. Shitnik flips it ahead to Shatan, tipping it away to center, and Primo just failed to get away. And it cleared it back to Shatan in over the line, can't get a shot away, charging after it again. Olin feeding it up to McGilney. McGilney to the Buffalo line. Kicks it free, took a shot, and ripped it wide. Oh, Alex can still dangle. Coming back for Groshek now. No drop it off. Comes as far as center ice. Good ahead to Groshek again, but the Canucks come up with the puck with a little over six minutes remaining in the third period. Bure to the Buffalo line. Slides in with a shot that deflects it of the corner off Budner. He banks it around for Barnaby. Barnaby slipping it up at center ice. Cannon trying to work it ahead to Groshek. Can't come up with it. Bure then gives it away to Budner. And Budner will drop it finally back to Barnaby. Barnaby goes to the corner looking for a trailer. It's intercepted by Messier. Shannon falls. Messier comes to center. Watched by Budner. He got it in over the line. Leaving it there. It's scooped into the corner. Hash! It reaches out and grabs that one. Less than six to go here in the third. Buffalo leading by five. 8488 at Mickey T's, and I like it. 8488, Mickey T's, this is the place. McDonald's introduces eight great menu items for 88 cents each every day. A double hamburger, chicken McNuggets, fries, shakes, sundaes, and breakfast stuff. Just 88 cents each. 8488 at Mickey T's, and I like it. Did somebody say McDonald's? Eight great menu items for 88 cents each. When the cold cruelness of winter drifts in, America's hottest truck is there to get you out. Dodge Ram. Ram is number one in available horsepower, torque, and payload compared to any full-size pickup. And now your Dodge dealer has a special allocation of new Dodge Ram 4x4s, well equipped, starting under 24,000. Now the hottest spot you'll find to travel this winter is right down the road at your friendly Dodge dealer. A well, youngster here with a sign that says, Get well, Grandpa, and move it have, a, have a move it down there so Grandpa <laughs> recognizes it. I'm sure he's watching. I guess he recognizes him anyways. 
5.43 to go here in the third period. 6-1 Buffalo. Face off to the left of Hashing. Well, a big to three, and it's taken by Woolley behind the net. Jason Woolley. He gets it up the middle. And away goes Ray. Ray will throw one in. Skips off into the corner. And Barnaby ran back. Barnaby after Crack. He knew something would happen. That's retribution for OG going after Hashik. Barnaby made a beeline for Sean Burke. And then no punches were thrown. I don't believe that there still may be before this one is all over. Primo is grappling up to the side with Lindner. They both go down. situations where the referee just there's no way he could have gained control of this game because of the incidents that happened certainly not from a refereeing point of view the fault of this and Matt Barnaby absolutely right as Rick said had one thing in mind he was going after Sean Burke the same as Ojek went after Dominic Hasek well now Ray and Linden are still winding up to take some more shots it looked like it was all over but apparently not and now the linesman comes over to get between them. And Burke is being warned away. Is this the old Sabre Hockey Club we're seeing? You betcha. This club uh, noted for sticking up for each other. And Matt Barnaby, who had some words for Dominic Hasek, has defended Hasek a number of times this year. And there was another example. A feeling Steeles is coming into goal for Buffalo. Yeah. They're not taking any chances that I think Lindy Rupp is saying, okay, we both ran a goaltender. Let's end it right now. And if you're going to run another Buffalo goaltender, you're going to run a big one, and you better be ready. Steel, Steve Shields is... Well, he came on, onto the ice. Now he steps back over the boards. <laughs> maybe he was just looking for a fight. He's one of the... He's one of the best fighters on the Sabres Hockey Club, is Steve Shields. Well, I thought he was coming out to get ready to go into action, but no, I guess he's not. <laughs> well, Matt Barnaby skated into the Vancouver zone and just made a beeline to the goaltender, Sean Burke. He shot the... Well, the puck was shot in, Burke played it to the corner, and Barnaby just went in and roughed him up. Of course, he knew that he would get plenty of company when he tried that. So. And of course, Matt Burnaby never stops talking. He, he's, <laughs> he talks all the way through fights, altercations, doesn't matter. And Mike Sillinger is having some words. Of course, everybody was having words out there, and now the poor referee's job is to try to sort out this mess as far yeah. as penalties are concerned. And then the biggest problem after this partner is going to be to find out what sticks and gloves belong to, <laughs> to which player because yeah. there's a ton of them down in the Vancouver zone. Looks like downtown Beirut. <laughs> All this with 524 remaining on the clock in the third period. I'm going to check my schedule to see when these teams play again. I think we ought to have Vancouver in the Northeast Division. It's in it's in March, I believe. <laughs> yeah, it it's uh, the Sabres play out west, play Edmonton, Vancouver, and Calgary in a three-game and four-night trip. Vancouver is the second of the three games. Now, folks, mark this one down on your calendar. That will be March the 26th in Vancouver. A 10 o'clock start. <laughs> 
Buffalo Sabres are going to win this hockey game with 5.24 to go with a five-goal lead. Jason Daw with a couple of goals tonight. A debt scored on a breakaway, and it's total frustration again for the Vancouver Canucks. They're yeah. just not a very good hockey club. They're very poor on defense, and that is hurting them. Of course, here we go to <laughs> pick up the gloves and sticks and find out where they go. Well, when we come back, we shall see what we shall see. Buffalo leading by five. Here's an update on our top story. Police now confirm the Bud Ice Penguin has been captured. Authorities say it is now safe to serve Bud Ice. That's right, just uh, bring it out loud in the open there. Nothing to worry about, everything's fine. And now, back to the music. Drink bought ice, but uh, beware of the penguins. Relationships offer certain advantages. He watches TV in the sink. So does the Marine Extra 3 account. She thinks all my jokes are funny. There are benefits to every relationship. He's got the greatest tools. Yeah. I want him back. Start one with Marine. Buffalo Sabres broadcast wardrobe is provided by M. Weil Men's Factory Outlet for the lowest prices and best values. Still not ready to play. <laughs> the sticks and gloves are picked up, folks, but the net still is off the magnets. Uh, the Vancouver zone. Buffalo in the lead by 6-1 to one with 524 remaining in regulation. This might be a nice time for me to remind you that the Grim Reaper and company will be parading into Buffalo next Wednesday night. Stu Grimson and the Carolina Hurricanes will be here at the Marine Midland Arena to take on the Sabres. 888-4000 is the number to call as the Hurricanes and the Sabres renew their rivalry. Barnaby uh, scored his first goal of the season against Carolina the last time they were in this building. An overtime goal. And he also has a goal here tonight for Buffalo and has just been tossed out of the game for running the goaltender. But this win tonight for Buffalo will tie them for a playoff position with the New York Rangers at 42 points. And the Sabres here tonight playing only their 45th game of the year. And they have games in hand on uh, just... Virtually everyone throughout the Northeast Division. They have games in hand coming into tonight's action on every team in the National Hockey League, both divisions. Coming, coming into in tonight's action. Five minutes for fighting in a game misconduct. Vancouver no, penalty this is uh, two, Mateus Olin. This field of penalties is going to take a while. Vancouver Watch penalty out here now. Iron Mike Mobile Keenan has put Donald Brashear on the ice. And Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo penalty to number 36, Matthew and Barnaby. And as five we minute, suspected, penalty, here comes Steve fighting. Shields. Buffalo penalty to number 32, Rob Ray. This five time I think fighting. he is and coming into goal, up. and indeed he is. And Buffalo penalty to number 6. And again, I, I mentioned Steve Shields, uh, you'll, look, you'll, look to, you'll look for a fight. I mean, that's the no, way he is. He's, he won't have to look far well, like Chris Hero out there. But you don't have to. Of course, he's a very physical goaltender. And the Sabres here for this face-off, sending out Pekka, along with Verada. It'll be Shannon and Jitnik. Now Van Massenhoven goes over for a quick word with Mike Keenan. I think he's saying probably, in effect, enough's enough. You've both done it. Let's let it go. In terms of goaltenders right. I'm talking about. See here. And it's going to be, uh, actually, Verrata was going to the penalty box to serve a penalty, so the Canucks... Oh, oh now Brashear just mugged Pekka right off the feet. Oh, here they go again, and here comes Shields. Shields and Burke are coming out to meet at center ice, and here they go. Shields and Burke. Shields rips off Sean Burke's helmet and starts firing the right, and Burke starts firing punches back again. Everybody on the ice is into it now. The two goals. Meanwhile, Brashear is going at it with another one of the Sabres. This all happened as soon as the puck was dropped. Brashear mugged Mike Pekka. He didn't even wait. He just went right after him, and Shannon is trying to come in to take out Brashear. They go at each other at center ice. They hit the ice, and the two goaltenders are great. 
grappling over near the penalty box. And now Shields tosses another punch. Everybody else at the moment at least has settled down, but the goaltenders are still ready to go. Oh, we knew this. We knew this was going to happen as soon as Keenan put Brashear on the ice. And Brashear immediately, as soon as the puck was dropped, uh, attacked Pekka. Pasek is standing on the bench now and watching his compatriot goaltender tangling with the goaltender of the other team as Brashear is... Well, he doesn't want to go to the dressing room, but he's being there by one of the linesmen and now the officials will come over and try and pry apart the two goaltenders. And it's going to take some prying. Well, th this is just absolutely nonsense. This is no class by the Vancouver Canucks. They began it with Ojek running Dominic Hasek. That's what started everything. Absolutely no class at all. I think Keenan should take his team and go play somewhere in the, what was it, those three brothers that used to play? The Hansons? The Hansons. Go play with them. Take your whole club and go with them. I just wonder if this type of a game Mike Keenan thinks is masking the fact that A, he has a bad hockey club, or B, he can't coach anymore. Oh, and, he, and C, he's not able to control the, the players, and I guess that goes under with your B. You can't coach anymore. You've got to really wonder, because this hockey club uh, has, does not seem to have any respect for him at all. Total domination tonight by Buffalo. This all started from the faceoff. As soon as they grabbed the puck. You know, it's a power play. Uh, Brashear... He's gonna, looking around off the face-off. He, he knew what was going to happen. Uh, as soon as the puck was dropped after Pekka, he goes. Didn't hesitate. Just went right for him. And I think Mike Pekka had a feeling it was yeah, coming. Sure he did. He was looking for it, but... But the last lap will belong to the guys in the white hats. They are up 6-1, to one, 5.22 left on the clock in the third period. And you can be sure that uh, uh, Mr. Burke in New York or wherever he is, if he's in Vancouver or wherever Brian Burke is, is going to have a whole lot of videotape to be watching. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might take him uh, half the day uh, or the whole day <laughs> to look at this baby. But you, you've got a feel here that the goaltenders are going to be out of this game, so that means Hasek's going to go back in. And not for one minute were the Sabres all panty waste in this whole oh, no. affair. There's no doubt about it that they were very willing to go. But, but they, we have to remember it all started when Ojik ran Hasek. Exactly, and you have to answer the call. Although the Canucks are going to say it all started when McKee hit Bure along the boards. And the referee missed the retaliation by Bure when he swung his stick at McKee. Since then, uh, referee Van Mazenhoven hasn't missed very much. Had his hands full, and so yeah. have the linesmen who have been doing yeoman duty tonight, Greg ever... Dvorsky and Brad Kovacic. And, and again, I go back, sometimes uh, situations like this are, are the fault of officiating. That is not the case tonight. No, no, no. This was a game that was just destined to get out of hand, and there's nothing anyone could have done about this. We, again, these are the two most penalized teams in the league. They are second tied for second for the most penalties, and guarantee you they may be tied for first here <laughs> when they make it, when they tally it up tomorrow. Well, they're just trying to collect some of the sticks and gloves and paraphernalia and whatever else might be left around on the ice. Sitting all off to itself, very lonely inside the Vancouver Blue Line is the puck, which somehow here in the third period, a whole lot of folks have forgotten about. Now, Arthur Zerbe is already out there skating around. He's got his mask on. He knows he's going to go into the nets. Well, Hasek's going to have to come yep. back in. And the referee, still over at the penalty timekeeper's box, making the calls. Dominic Hasek uh, 
Replaced by Steve Shields. Well, you knew that Burke and Shields were yeah. going to go at it yeah. as soon as that thing broke loose, as soon as Brashear jumped on Pekka, that the two goaltenders were going to be involved. Whether they were involved with each other or not, they were going to get in there. Uh, I, I think I'm sure there's some people wondering, well, gee, they won, uh, Sabres went ahead and sacrificed Steve Shields for Dominic Hasek. I guarantee you that Coach Lindy Ruff uh, had a chat with him and mm -hmm. said, look, this is what I, I think we should do. How do you feel about this? Uh, I'm sure that he just didn't all of a sudden uh, decide to put Steve Shields to replace Dominic Hasek because Lindy knew what was going to happen. I mean, Lindy played this game as tough as anyone and is in, was involved in situations like this uh, fairly regularly through his career. So he had a sense and a feel that this game was going to explode. He made the right move. The goaltenders may still be in the game. Burke and uh, Shields, they've got their equipment on, so apparently they're going to be left in the hockey game, and Burke is heading back into the net. Come join the pregame warm-up party at the Pearl Street Grill. This package offers a buffet dinner, two complimentary beverages at the Pearl Street Grill, and a ticket to a Sabres game the same night. Now, packages start at $15. Packages are available for the games on January 21st and January 27th. For more information, 855-4444 is the number to call. The reason for the delay at the moment is that the referee is over at the Buffalo bench right now explaining his rulings, and I'm sure he's coming to the Vancouver bench next. And he shall. And of course, what's going on here too is he's explaining say look you, you're gonna have to send players over to serve these penalties he's just telling the coaches and I guess we were wrong about the goaltenders yeah being I, tossed. Th I, I thought, it. thought for sure that they'd be gone <laughs> Shields is to our left uh, Sean Burke to our right now the goalies get two minutes for leaving the crease and five for fighting a 10-minute miscondite Buffalo penalty to number eight Daryl Shannon Two minutes for roughing and a 10-minute misconduct. Buffalo Shannon penalty to number 31, Steve Shields. Two minutes for leaving the crease and five minutes for fighting. Buffalo penalty to number 17, Jason Daw. A 10-minute misconduct. Now still the referee Vancouver, eight, over at the Vancouver bench now discussing the situation with Juan Peter Burke, and the coaching two staff. Two minutes for leaving the crease, five minutes for fighting. Assistant and coaches, 36, uh, Stan Smeal and Glenn Hamlin. Conduct. Number 31, Shields, two minutes for leaving the crease, and five minutes for fighting. And number 17, Dodd, attending the 37 conduct. shots on goal for the Canucks, 30 for Buffalo. Mike Keenan looks relatively unruffled by all the proceedings. I'm sure that Keenan is more upset about the score in this game than anything else that has occurred. The fact that his team just cannot get it together. And that they're heading home to host the All-Star game and the... the eyes of the hockey world will be focused directly on the city of Vancouver this weekend. Well, Vancouver, one of the most beautiful cities in North America, and what a, what a place to host a, an all-star oh, contest. Yes. You know, Alex has stayed out of the fray tonight. Not his style of hockey. The McGill and there are a couple of other games being played in the NHL. The only other two are just ahead of the, the all-star break. Washington has defeated Chicago 3-2 coming from behind in that game. And in Denver, Colorado leading San Jose 1-0 in the second period. That's it, along with this game as far as action is concerned. Well, this that, game is pushing three hours. Yeah. And we still have 522 to go here in the third period. Power play for Vancouver will be four on three. And I think Van Massenhoven now is just good. let's let's go. Blow the whistle and Get this thing underway here. Or no, it's not a power play for Vancouver. <laughs> There's so many penalties here, folks. It's going to be four on four. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because I'm going to count the players before they drop the puck to the face. Off. Well, they're still announcing penalties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now well, let me correct myself here. It's a three on three, folks. Three on three. All and right. This is. This is 
something that you don't see hardly at all. 252 minutes in penalties called in this game so far. Yes. Which two teams lead the National Hockey League in penalty minutes heading into the All-Star break? Broder. So now, finally, we get set to go again. And Lume will swirl around and bring it away for the Canucks. Lume, a guy that crossed down to Messier, and over the line with a shot, Shields kicked it away. Lume after it again. Lume holding it in, back to the point, dumped it off to Messier. Messier drops it back into the corner to Bure. Bure for Messier again. Messier left it to Bure, trying to work down low. Works his way into the corner, watched by Woolley, still has the puck. He's trying to get away from Pekka Kennedy in front, taken away by Pekka. Starting out two on one with Shipnik. Pekka coming in over the line. Fifth is shot, trying to drop it back. Got another whack at it. And it goes off the leg out to center ice. Shitnik catching up with it for Buffalo. Shitnik now just cruising around in his own end. Just as happy to take time off the clock. Ahead, Pekka will tap it back to the middle. Woolley to the Vancouver line, twisting his way in, and Burke knocked it away. Rebound to Adet. Adet tried to slide it in front. That skips across ice. Flat chops at it, but Bure picks it up. Bure chased back behind the net. Now he starts away. Adet stole the puck, and then Bure got it back again. Bure coming to the Buffalo line. Took a shot. Shields knocked that down, and it slapped off into the corner. After it, Naslin. Naslin keeping it in. Less than four minutes left on the clock. It's left for Pavich. Walking in. Took a shot. Shields knocked it away. The rebound! And it's cleared away, but the whistle had already gone. I think the players are a little confused here. They're not used to playing three on three. I mean, you, you practice uh, just for the heck of it when you when you scrimmage sometimes three on threes, and guys just go out and have a good time. But I think some of the players aren't really sure where they're supposed to be. And it connects with the better scoring opportunities in this situation, and the puck was hit with a high stick by Nasland, and the faceoff will be outside the Buffalo blue line. Benches are rather sparse. This is like getting a breakaway on the St. Lawrence and ending up in Newfoundland. <laughs> there's lots of room out there. Well, there's five players on the Buffalo bench. Two, four, six, seven, eight, counting the spare goalie on the Vancouver bench. Messier bringing it in over the line now. He'll flip it back, and that'll go to center ice. Grosje keeping an eye on Ledyard, sent across to Lume. Lume in over the line. He just left it there, and the Sabres collected and stacked back again. Flat can't get away, though. It's taken back by Lume. Lume is pumped off the play by Zitnik. And now Shields will send it across the plant. He whips it out at center, and it just jumped away from Groshek. Goes down the ice. Groshek charging after it. Steered it behind the net. Shit. And Groshek is shot right on. Work the save. Lume left it there for Ledger. Come back in the other direction. Newman picks it up in the corner. Three minutes remaining in the third period. Ledger trying to get away. Can't get it out. It's kicked in by Chatan. Chatan, oh, he got slashed by Ledger. They jam it beside the net. Roll back into the corner. No penalty called on Grant Ledger there. Then away to center. The Canucks coming away, and Bure picks it up. Bure in over the line. Trying to bust through the defense, and he got squeezed out. Pekka picks it off. Pekka sliding behind the net. It to an open wing. And that'll be tapped out and sent to center ice. And now the stick's coming up behind the play again, as it was Chaos on the ice for the first time, I believe, in the game. A shot right on Shields. They score! On the rebound, and the Canucks getting their second goal of the game as Dure puts it away. Now, Pavel Burry picks up his own rebound and guns it by. Steve Shields, Burry has been terrific tonight for Vancouver. 17.39, the time of the goal. Burry using that great speed to go to the outside and to buy him some extra yards. Quick shot, Shields with the save, and Curtis Brown couldn't get there in time to cover up Burry. He puts in his own rebound at 6-2. The 2.21 remaining. Now Skatchard comes over to the penalty box to serve a penalty of the Canucks, one of his teammates, and fed off the boards and ends up at center ice. 
McKee will chip it across ice. Woolley giving it to McKee again. Long pass, picked off at center. That's knocked down. It goes back to Babbage. Babbage turning around with his own end, feeding it ahead. Naslin comes to the Buffalo line and over. He gets checked. Babbage lets it slide back to the point. Steered in by Stayoff to the corner. And around on the boards, and Platt starts away. Platt fires it up on the wing to Audet. Audet got in over the line and lost control of the last second. Stayoff's taking it back. A uh, minute 40 seconds remaining here in the third okay, period. And here's Dury racing in again, trying to pad his stats. He gets centering wide of the net. The Sabres getting it back. Look ahead. Brown will leave it back there. Gunned around on the boards by McKee. McKee digging it free. Trying to get it to center. Messier stepped in front of him. Worked up ahead to Bure once again. Bure rolling around at his own line. Left it there for Lume. It's kept back into the corner. Lume picks it off once more for Vancouver and strikes away the long pass to Messier. Messier took his shot, and that one will deflect and go out of play as Jitnik got his stick down in front of it. Yeah, nice play by Alex Jitnik, of course, uh, who certainly has speed equal to Mark Messier, and he used it to deflect that puck into the crowd. Mark Messier tonight, though, playing in his 1,320th game. He Fourth all-time leading point getter in the NHL with 1,591. Named the 12th greatest player in the history of the NHL by the Hockey News. And still playing at a high level for Vancouver. 18 years. 18 seasons. Huck came out over the line. Ledyard unable to keep it in. Less than a minute remaining in the hockey game. Ledyard at center ice. Clipping one in. Shields will slow it down for Woolley. Woolley poked it back for Shipnick. Shipnick trying to bust away behind the net. Messier stole it. Got it in front. The shot shields the save. Rebound. And Shields has got that one. As Rume let it backhand go. A great piece of goaltending. And what was impressive about that, the, the first shot could have taken Shields out of position by Lume, but it didn't. So Shields was in position to make the save on the rebound. Messier picking up the loose puck and putting it to Lume. Shields fell down or made the save going down the first time, but he was in perfect position to make the save on the rebound. So a nice piece of goaltending by Steve Shields. The faceoff to his right with 37 seconds remaining in regulation. 6-2 Buffalo. Messier sliding it back to Babbage. He works it on the other side. The shot by Bure caroms off into the corner. Woolley trying to tie up his check in there. Fed around on the boards, and the Sabres bring it out with Platt darting away to center. Hits the Vancouver line, kicked it in over the line. Burke will flip it off the boards. Rolled around on the board, tried to get it out in front. Chicane knocked it down. Cleared off into the corner. Charging after it, Stetchard. Stetchard got it to center ice. Recovered by McKee. McKee flips it back in the other direction. Knocked down by Willie. Two seconds remaining around behind the net. And the game is over. Now the Buffalo Sabres reach the all-star break in fine fashion winning tonight. Decisively against the Vancouver Canucks. And when your goal scorers start to score goals, it sure makes life easier. Dominic Hasek, another outstanding performance tonight for Buffalo. Donald Adet scored his second goal in two games. Uh, Shaw with a couple of quick goals back in the second period, and the disheartened Canucks now head back to Vancouver. The Vancouver Canucks scored the first goal in this hockey game. They scored the last goal in this hockey game. However, they did not get the six in between. And Buffalo romps by a score of six to two. Breakaway showtime. He scores. Log on to the coolest game on earth. NHL.com puts you center ice with cool features, the latest stats, and hottest video clips. Listen to live radio broadcasts of virtually every NHL game free. It doesn't get any better than this, baby. Get cool gear from the NHL store, chat with NHL superstars, or jump to your favorite team's website. 24 hours a day from anywhere in the world. Skate the web and score with NHL.com. Now's a great time to come home. Come home to Roses during our sales tax sale. Roses will immediately discount your purchase equal to the amount of the sales tax. 
Now's the best time to buy all appliances and electronics at the lowest prices. Plus, 50% off all furniture and bedding. For the biggest selection and lowest prices, come home. Come home to Rosemont. The bandits are back. Season tickets on sale now. Call 855-4444 for more information. See the all-new Discover Stars on Ice. Presented by Smuckers. Olympic gold is coming. Live on the ice. Christy Yamaguchi. Scott Hamilton. Torval and Dean. Paul Wiley. Kurt Browning. Ekaterina Gordieva and more. The most exciting. Exhilarating. Extraordinary night of the year. March 3rd at Marine Midland Arena. Tickets at the Arena Box Office and Fantastics locations are charged by phone. Celebrate Discover Stars on Ice. Presented by Smuckers. In the end, the Buffalo Sabres outscore the Vancouver Canucks 6-2 and move into a tie for a playoff position in the Eastern Conference. Well, I'll tell you, the way this game started out, uh, scoreless in the first period, kind of hard to figure you're going to end up with eight by the end of the game. It wasn't that something. Uh, the first period, we had all kinds of scoring chances, mm -hmm. and, of course, we were uh, really enjoying that because uh, that's not something you see uh, too often in this league anymore, but first period was wide open, and then... Buffalo uh, actually got behind one to nothing uh, as the Vancouver Canucks took the lead, but then it was all Buffalo. Jason Doffard uh, home a couple of quick ones, and and again I go back to the point though uh, when the guys that uh, that are the snipers start to snipe, uh, boy it makes life a lot easier when you start scoring. And, but you know when when you refer to all the extracurricular activity in this game, I guess we shouldn't be surprised when you're talking about two of the most penalized no. teams in the league. I mean. It, Something was bound to happen, I suppose. Yeah, I, I guess so, and I think that combined with the fact uh, the, the Canucks have won only one game in the last 12, uh, mm -hmm. really struggling, uh, frustrating, but I, I just don't like to see somebody like Ocek uh, take a run at the goaltender. I mean, that's that to me is is really low, and that's what happened, and that's really what started the whole thing going. Well, a uh, nice night for a lot of Buffalo Sabres, including one who's with Danny Gare right now. Well, thanks, guys. You're right. Uh, Jason Woolley, who, who picked up his third goal tonight, uh, you know, that goal pretty much uh, set, the, set the table here for this hockey club as you really came back and stormed that second period. Yeah, we had a great second period. Uh, you know, pretty much even. We were pretty happy with the first period, but we played a little too much running gun, and with those guys over there, you got to really be careful. We want to tighten up a little bit in the second, and, you know, with that team out there, if you uh, tighten up defensively, you're going to get your chances offensively. Well, you did tighten up defensively, and you have been doing that, to Jason, in the last five or six games. Your record now 3-1-1 one, one since going on that West Coast trip. Now a tie for a uh, playoff position. What do you have to continue to do to, to continue to keep in that position? Well, I think there's uh, no way we can get away from playing good defense. Dom's going to be there uh, pretty much every night. So uh, we keep the, uh, the shots uh, limited, their scoring chances down. And just sometimes just make the smart plays and get the puck out and ice it if we have to. If we're in trouble down low, uh, we're going to be in good shape. A little old-time hockey there tonight? Yeah, was, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like watching you, Danny, when I was young. <laughs> yeah, but I usually got in fights early and got out of the game early. These ones were late. But, Jason, good luck and, and uh, thanks and enjoy the All-Star break. Thanks, Danny. Thanks. Back upstairs to you guys. <laughs> Well, I, it's going to be a very happy dressing room as far oh, yeah. as Buffalo is concerned. I mean, they've been chasing that elusive playoff spot all year. Now, of course, they got to fight to stay there, but they finally got there. But, and that's the, that's true. And, and of course, uh, for the guys that aren't going to an all to the All Star Game, it's going to be sort of nice for yeah. them. Uh, and be nice for Dominic Ashik too, uh, representing this this club uh, at the All Star Game. But some of the boys are going to New York. Uh, I talked to them this morning. Uh, Curtis Brown. Uh, Let's see, so Wayne Primo, I think, is involved. Derek Plant, they're, they're going to go sightseeing. Uh, they have tickets to uh, Saturday Night Live. Uh, Rob Ray's going ice fishing. I talked to him north of Pembroke, and I, and I said, well, uh, Rob, are you, do you have a shack? And he said, of course, because I'm not that dumb. He said, <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's warm in those shacks. But uh, it was sort of interesting. So some of the boys are just going to kick back for the next couple of days and enjoy the time off. Well, our best dodge, three stars from tonight's hockey game here at the Marine Midland Arena. And not surprisingly, the Buffalo Sabres would be featured front and center. Jason Daw, number one. Donald Adepa, second. And Dominic Hasek, 
the third star in the game. So now the Sabres, along with the rest of the National Hockey League, except those fellows who are participating in the All-Star game, get a few days off. Buffalo's next will be Tuesday night, and they take on the Philadelphia Flyers in Philly, and then back home the next night against the Carolina Hurricanes. The Sabres head into the All-Star break on a high note. Six to two victors over the Vancouver Canucks. Rick Jenneret for Jim Lorenz and Danny Gare. Good night from downtown Buffalo. Sabres win it. Final score of 6-2 over the Vancouver Canucks. Lots of offense for Buffalo this evening. The Canucks, very poor in their own end. But Michael, a show of solidarity this evening. Ojik runs your goaltender. You better answer the bell the other way. Look the shades of last year, but Buffalo, they really exposed Vancouver's weaknesses, and there were many. Join us tonight on the hotline. We're taking your calls, and that's coming up next. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Levant Hockey Outline. Brian Blessing, Mike Robitaille, 6 to the final. Uh, Sabres scored often against this bunch tonight. Boy, yeah. Vancouver. I mean, they got a ton of talent, Mike, but nothing in their own end. Well, you know, I, uh, Brian, they have three or four really talented hockey players. The rest after that are, at best, average players. Mm -hmm. And they didn't show up tonight. They haven't been showing up all year long. They're big guns like Alexander McGillian. I don't know where he disappeared, but... Uh, he was a slow float tonight, but he's been a slow <laughs> float for the last five years. I've been trying to tell you people that, and uh, when he was a star here in Buffalo, guy quit, quit once, and he's doing it again. So they expose their weaknesses. All right, we want to get down to Marine Midland Arena to hear what the coach has to say. Uh, shoot the puck, opportunity is just starting to pay off. Yeah, uh, you know what uh, was nice is uh, you know Dog got a couple and Barnaby got a couple, so that. Uh, that rounded out the group that went to shooting school. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you make of all that nonsense in the last uh, five, six minutes? Well, you know, I, I think the uh, thing that upset our team the most was the, the two-handed swing that uh, Burray took at Jay McKee by the bench, and then, you know, linesman was standing there, and nothing was called, and, and uh, you know, I think the players still uh, were taking exception to what Burke did in the preseason. When he went after Dom, came from the other end of the ice and went after Dominic. He's the disposable goalie or the better fighter? He's the better fighter. <laughs> but, you know, I, I had Bashir's pointing down at Dominic. I mean, so I, there was no choice. I mean, although he's facing the power play, you, you can't let him. Uh, they already, he already ran him over once. That can't happen. Will you be contacting the league probably? I think the league will probably be contacting us. Both sides, does that include Barnaby going after Berkeley? I think so, yeah. You know? It will be a... I mean, when, you, when you change your lines up, even though you had the shooting school, but the change of lines, putting uh, Odette and Daw together with Plant has really seemed to make a difference, and also Verado more in a checking role with your Pekka line. Yeah, well, I, uh, you know, I've been uh, tinkering for a long time, and I think uh, a lot of people see it that you know, lines haven't been staying together, and that's been a problem. But I've been thinking the other way. You know, when you're not scoring, you got to try to find some combinations that can score on a regular basis. Uh, and I've said for a time now that the Groshik uh, Barnaby Brown line has been a good line, and uh, the last two games, the uh, Plant Daw Death. And uh, you know, Peck's always does a great job for us, and you know, he's power play penalty kill. He plays against other teams' top line, so I can't say enough about the. You know, the way he plays. You going to go back to the shooting school uh, method? I don't know, and maybe when we uh, simmer off a little bit, but it's, you know, it's unfortunate now that we have three days off because it, it looks like we just kind of got things in sync, and now, uh, you know, we got to take the three days. Anything in particular, Wendy, and how you're playing that's gotten the offense going a little bit? Is it just 
finding the net, or is it you, you're opening up things? Or? Well, the last two games we've been stressing offense. So I haven't mentioned uh, how to play in your own end. Uh, you know, we had a little meeting in Toronto on, on why. You know, I just asked them why. Why do they think the offense is down? You know, and I got various opinions, but you know, my my point in my meeting there was just how we're going to score goals, and this is how we're going to do it. And we're going to screen goaltenders. And, you know, I, I think that uh, the players made a commitment more than any shooting school helped anybody, really. Lindy, for two nights, you guys have produced a lot of turnovers in the goals, especially tonight, but even last night. Uh, is it just better forechecking, or, or what, what, what's been attributed to that? Well, I, I thought we had very strong puck pursuit. You know, in their zone, we were, we were on, top of the, on top of it. You know, they made the first pass, and we were right there. That created the turnovers, and, uh, you know, the, the speed in our transition was, was excellent the last two days. Is there a game that will send the, the Dominics behind them and they can do more and, and know that I mean, he's going to stop every shot? You know, it, it looked a little bit like that tonight. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, Dom made some huge saves for us early in the game, uh, breakaway. And, and then uh, it seemed like the two team you know, kind of fed off that. And uh, we got stronger as the game went along. You've made the final playoff spot now. You've got three days to think about it. What are the goals that you're going to set now after the All-Star break? Oh, no, now we focus on the uh, seventh-place team, you know, which is uh, Ottawa. So we, we go after them. We've got a couple games in hand on them still. Uh, we can close the gap fairly faster. But, uh, you know, All right. We, we... Lindy Ruff, 6-2 the final score. Sabres over Vancouver. We're going to step aside for just a bit and come right back in the Labatt Hockey Headline. Stick around. Mountain beer is here. When the cold cruelness of winter drifts in, America's hottest truck is there to get you out. Dodge Ram. Ram is number one in available horsepower, torque, and payload compared to any full-size pickup. And now your Dodge dealer has a special allocation of new Dodge Ram 4x4s, well equipped, starting under 24,000. Now the hottest spot you'll find to travel this winter is right down the road at your friendly Dodge dealer. You can't imagine your life without them. How about theirs without you? Who's your insurance agent? Beverly Smolinski, 4660 Cap Road, Hamburg, a half mile north of Wester Ford. Or Steve Prohovic, 3875 South Park Avenue, Blaisdell, in the Command Plaza. Being in good hands is the only place to be. All right, big news for the Sabres. They get a win over the Canucks, but also today uh, the Sabres have exercised the option on Dominic Hashuk's contract uh, for next year. And the goalie is addressing the media right now. Let's hear what he's got to say. I'm glad. They they pick up my option. You know it means it looks like I spend at least one more year in Buffalo. You know I I just hate to do the promises. You know because whatever can happen. You know it's it, it happened. Many players they made a promises or whatever. I don't want to make the promises, but I'm happy here in Buffalo right now, and it, I hope I will be happy here for one more year. Would you like to sign another contract? Darcy was talking about maybe getting together and, and signing another one, getting a, a long-term contract. Yeah, Would we, you like to do something like I, that? I will see. You know, I, I have to think everything about everything. You know, talk to my wife. It's, you know, I, I have right now at least one more year. And, uh, I want to sit down with him and uh, with my agent and talk about it. But I didn't make a decision if I want to sign a new contract or not. I, it's really, 
I'm not really sure. What would cause you to think otherwise, Tom? Excuse me? What would cause you to think otherwise, that perhaps you might take a chance at, at leaving this team? No, I don't want to leave this team. I want to stay here and play here. But, but and, and if, uh, if the team plays on the same level as we play right now, for sure I, I'll stay here, you know. It's, uh, you know, my, uh, the team play with discipline, you know. And it's most important for me if I see my teammates work hard in front of me and play with discipline. If we score goals, if we don't score goals, you know, it's it's other things, you know. But if I see my teammates play uh, with heart or with discipline, I it means I stay here also. I think that you see them playing more of that now than they were in November. Mm. I don't know. I probably I think so. Yeah, in the beginning of the year we. We have so many distractions, you know, people boot me, not only me, they boot like all teams sometimes, and I, I can see my teammates play with more discipline, for sure. Right, you still look forward to going to All-Star games? You've been to a couple now, it's going to be a different format. You I'm still looking look forward? forward, of course, you know, my wife, she's looking forward because she's uh, going to be a nice trip, I hope, uh, with my wife and with my son, and uh, look, really looking forward, yeah be in other city, you know, and this uh, this game, you know, it's not, not pressure like in the other game, it's just it's for, for fun. I want to win this game, but it's, you know, it's, it's more for fun. Do you like the new format? In other words? Uh, I like it this year because of the Olympic Games, so it's something special, but I hope, I think next year they they should go to the old format, or uh, like last year or before. Dominic, your player is making seven and eight million a year now. You almost, you seem like a bargain almost at four million. Have you discussed that with with Rich Winter? Yeah, I talked with my agent about it. You know, I and you know for sure I don't look for the same money uh, like Eric, Eric, Eric Lindros or Caria. Uh, but the reason is just because I'm in Buffalo. You know, if I would be in New York or in Philadelphia, probably I would look for same money. Great, thanks. I don't know. The money's as green in Buffalo <laughs> yeah. as it is in Philadelphia, Mike. As ever, yeah. So listen, the offer of seven, no, I'll turn it down, I'll take four. <laughs> uh, I'll just say that we've got a piece with Darcy Regeer, but I'll tell you what, this is uh, the best move Buffalo can make. It's, they could make a better move. I still think of $4 million, he is the best deal in hockey. They not only have the best goaltender, they have the best player in the National Hockey League. Let's see what the general manager, Darcy Regeer, had to say about this. It, it was delayed a little bit, only in that uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Regas uh, uh, purchasing the team, we felt it was very important for the Sabre organization uh, to uh, take the opportunity to, dis to, to discuss it with, uh, with Mr. Regas and with Tim and Mike Regas as well, and we had a good conversation regarding it. And uh, at the end of the day, both the Sabres and the Regas uh, family felt it was very important for the uh, organization to uh, act on the option year contract uh, as, as soon as possible, which we did. All right, so Dominic Kashuk, uh, certainly uh, this is a man uh, that the uh, Sabres are counting on heavily in the future and uh, at a bargain basement price as far as you're concerned. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? I never thought I'd see the I day mean, where you'd say $4 million, million is a good deal, but it really is. Uh, uh, I, I think probably in some other markets he, his, that price must be right up, but he's a, he's a rare individual and uh, I don't think money is everything to him. I think it's very important, but a lot of other important things to him. I think what has impressed me more than anything else so far about Dominic Kasich is that uh, after uh, what I think are a lot of mistakes last year on his part, he uh, took it, Brian. He got himself straightened out, and he literally went through hell at times this year, and uh, he had thick enough skin to fight through it, and he did. That really says an awful lot about his character that he could overcome that. All right, we want to head down to Marine Midland Arena. The Sabres exploded with four goals in the second period, and a man who was right in the middle of that was Jason Daw with two quick ones, Danny. You're right, Brian. He did get two quick ones, two in 15 seconds, and he took them two and 22 prior to this game, I should say. But uh, it's nice to get that monkey off your back, I'm sure. Well, anytime things are going the way they were, uh, you know, especially when you get two quick ones, uh, you know, playing with a, on a line that's very offensive with Derek Plant and Don about that, uh, you're going to get your chances, and I was excited. You know, Jason, uh, Lindy Ruff, I asked him that in his uh, post-game press conference, and the fact that he put you guys together, obviously you were struggling a little with Pekka, he was struggling with Holzinger, and he put you together on, on a line that uh, they really seemed to complement in tonight's seven points. Well, at the beginning of the uh, the pregame skate yesterday in Toronto, uh, you know, Lindy pulled me aside, and he said, uh, 
you know, I expect a lot more offense out of you and, and Donald and, you know, Shatan and, uh, and Derek. And he said tonight, he said, I'm going to put you on a line with Derek and Donald. And uh, I don't even want you guys to think defense, just go on, go on the offense. And, uh, you know, yes, last night and tonight it worked. Well, you pick up 10 goals at this hockey club in the last two games. Uh, now you're going into an all-star break uh, pretty on a pretty good roll. Well, it's, you know, you can take positives from this. Uh, you know, but on the other hand, we're on a roll right now. You'd like to keep things going. Yeah. But uh, the key right now is uh, for guys to take care of themselves over the next three days and to, uh, you know, and to build on what we got going here. Well, Jason, good luck and enjoy your uh, um, uh, all-star break break. <laughs> and we'll see you when you get back. Thanks, Dan. Jason Donald picked up his 16th, 17th goals here tonight at the Marine Midland Arena, getting out of his slump. Two quick goals that put this game away, guys, in uh, 15 seconds. Danny, with the exception of the San Jose game, we go back to the Colorado game. The Sabres really seem to have turned a corner. And uh, now at the All-Star break, I guess uh, tonight, uh, impressive performance. The, they get the numbers up to put Vancouver away. But I think going into the break here, Danny, you've got some solidarity. I mean, you know, it got stupid there at the end, but the bottom line is, guy takes a run and hash it, you've got to respond, and, and the Sabres did just that. Well, you're right. Two wrongs don't make a right, but, uh, I mean, one thing that they did do there is stand up for their goaltender after, you know, Ojek really, uh, I thought, which was shot going after Dominic. There was no need for that at all. Uh, and then Barnaby coming back, you know, doing the same thing to Burke, but it did show some camaraderie. It showed a group of players that want to stick together, and you can always build from these things. I just don't... <laughs> No, if I'd want to be in that lineup March 25th going back to Vancouver. <laughs> Mark on the calendar there, Danny. <laughs> Tell uh, me about it. All right, hey, look, thanks a lot. Enjoy all right. the All-Star break. Thank you. All right, Danny Gear, we'll catch him Tuesday night. Uh, Michael, 6-2, the final count here. And uh, uh, the Sabres seem to be slowly but surely uh, finding a bit of chemistry now. Well, that's good. They're going to need it. It wasn't a very successful first half. They finished up strong right near the end here, see if they can carry it on to next season. One thing about a lot of these players it has been a real good half for them, Brian, but all they can do is get better. Their game must improve. And I think they have the ability to improve. All right, we're going to step aside for just a bit, and we'll return momentarily on the Labatt Hockey Hotline. We hope you'll join us. Your call's coming up next. The Labatt Hockey Hotline is brought to you by Labatt Blue, Canada's number one selling beer for over 20 years. Boy, he had a beautiful wedge, and now he's got a tricky little left-to-right putt to win. Yes, and he's going to have to be firm with this one. Close enough. To win it, take five from the New York Lottery. All you need to do is be close. That's five, four, three, or even two numbers. Take five. Five numbers to pick, just two numbers to win. When it comes to choosing the right motor oil, let's make something perfectly clear. Introducing three new oils from Quaker State, specially formulated for the vehicle you drive. Synthetic blends for hard-working engines and high-horsepower engines. A full synthetic for ultimate engine protection. Extra filtered with patented Micro-Q filtration to ensure your oil starts clean for a difference you can see and trust. So when it comes to protecting your vehicle, why take a chance? Quaker State. The choice is clean. Grandpa, can you tell me a story? Sure. Here's one about this Perry's ice cream. Mm. I remember when Perry's first started as a dairy back in 1918. They delivered milk to our house. Really? Yep. Later, the school asked if they could make ice cream for the school lunches. Well, they did, and boy, was it delicious. So popular, everybody wanted it. So Perry's just grew and grew over the years. But you know what? What, Grandpa? Perry's is just as good now as it was then. Some things never change. All right, let's find out what's going on in the rest of the sporting world. And to do the honors, here comes Mike DeGeorge. Thanks, guys. Just two other games in the NHL tonight on this last night of play before the All-Star break. To the MCI Center we go, where Washington hosting the Chicago Blackhawks tonight. There you see Adam Oates, game tied at two, and it would stay that way when Ole Kolzig making the nice save on Tony Amonti. 2-2 in the third. 
That man again, the red-hot Andrew Brunette scoring his ninth of the season. That is the game winner for Washington as they slow down the Hawks tonight. The final is 3-2. to two. One game going right now in progress. San Jose, Colorado, 1-1 going to the third. Well, we've heard this before and we're hearing it again tonight. Reports in Pittsburgh saying the Penguins and Yermer Yager on the verge of reaching a new contract. Pittsburgh Post-Gazette reporting tonight that a six-year, $48 million deal is imminent. 25-year-old Yager under contract right now through the end of next season. But it appears a new one is about to replace that one. Coming up on the full 30-minute edition of the Empire Sports Report, we'll hear from the Sabres GM as the team hits the All-Star break. And also coming up, the stars out in New York City tonight. That includes Bills quarterback Jim Kelly. It's all for a good cause, and we'll have the story coming up. Also coming up at 11.30. It is the latest on the Bills situation, including the quarterback situation with Doug Flutie. Michael and Brian? All right, Mike, uh, we'll <laughs> see you shortly uh, thereafter. Uh, yeah. I know you got to hustle, so we'll let you get back to work, and we want to get to a phone call. Good. Dean and Tonawanda is on board. Hi, Dean. Hi, guys. What's up? What's going on? Not much. How are you doing? Go ahead. Pretty good. Um, what do you guys think about the All-Star break coming this weekend? You know what's going to go on? Well, I think, what did you guys think about the penalties tonight in this game? And what did you guys think about Jason Dawes' goals? All right, thanks. Well, that both teams just lost tonight physically. I mean, they really got into this game, and they played uh, a very good physical game. But the problem was when it came to hockey, Buffalo was the only team on the ice. I don't know what happened to Vancouver. I'll tell you, uh, this club needs some discipline or play with emotion or something. But I'm sure Mike Keenum will gut that team and clean out what has to be cleaned out to get that organization going in the right direction because he's got a lot of work in front of him. You find it pretty funny last year, uh, I mean, you know, we've had the opportunity now to watch Hashik the past few seasons here and just uh, rave about what we see night in, night out. But the All-Star break last year uh, at the All-Star game, that's where Hashik really kind of caught the, the world by storm. That's where they go, wow, who is this guy? Sad, isn't it? It's unbelievable. It would but take something like that at the All-Star game. you think they would have caught on by now. Uh, just in case they don't know, and just in case they're listening, <laughs> listen to me carefully. Everyone in the NHL, all the people out there that know everything, there's one thing I know. If I know one thing, he's the best player in hockey. Not goaltender, in all of hockey. Better than Lindros, better than the whole bunch of them. He's the best. No one, no one in this league can win as many games by himself as Dominic Kasich. No Jaeger, no Gretzky. Any guy you want to talk about, they can't even come close. This guy, by a country mile, is the greatest player in the National Hockey League. And Buffalo did a great job. And they nailed him down for another the year. Good work. You got yourself covered as long as you have him in goal. All right. And we'll be back. We'll pay some bills right now and join you in a moment on the Labatt Hockey Alley. Internet services for the Labatt Hockey Hotline are provided by Online Media. You are connected. Call 716-681-0899 and get connected to the Internet today. Nobody wants to finish second. That's why Icon Office Solutions helps you compete better. With copier systems, computer networking, and outsourcing, all designed to help your company do one thing, win. Icon Office Solutions, work to win. Can't ever find the right cutting tool for the job? You need the World Tool, the 10-way cutter. World Tool slices through virtually any material, including denim, vinyl, linoleum, even thick foam. Cut custom mirrors and glass to any size and at any angle. Decorative tilings as simple as cut and snap. Cut tiles straight or curved or in a circle. For all your crafts and hobbies, you'll reach for the World Tool again and again. World Tool will whisk through wire reinforced safety glass. It's lightweight, sturdy, and fits right in your hand. Cut custom matting, rip through rope, strip electrical cord, and cut wire. Every blade can be covered for total safety. Get $300 worth of cutting power for only $14.95. You get a hook blade, hobby blade, straight cutter, circle cutter, and roller cutter, plus knife and scissor sharpeners. And ask about the carpet cutter attachment. Call now. Call 1-800-827788. World Tool comes complete with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-827788. World Tool is not available in any store. 1-800-827788. Don't wait. Call now. The Nice Play of the Game. Brought to you by Nice. 
Use your NICE card for purchases at stores and gas stations wherever you see the Red NICE logo. All right, Sabres, big winners over the Canucks tonight. Let's get back to the phones. John and NT. Hi, John. Hi. How are you, sir? Go ahead. Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Great, your question, John. Nathan Hanson eats poop. Is that right? All right, nice let's go to Jason in Tupper Lake. Hello, Jason. It's like talking to a head of lettuce. There you go. Head full of dumb. Go ahead. Jason? Jason, are you there? All right. Uh, let's go to Karen and Hornell and try Karen. Karen, be a hero. What's wrong with you tonight? Hi, guys. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, Karen. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I have two things I want to say. The first thing I want to say, very poor sportsmanship on behalf of Vancouver. Um, I'm glad my son wasn't up to see that. Um, uh, well, the other thing I want to say is I, I've come up with an interesting stat. Uh, I went through the Sabres record this year, and uh, in games that they have scored, or they have allowed two goals or less, Sabres are 16 wins, one loss, and five ties. When they allow three or more goals to be scored against them, they only have one win, 19 losses, and ties for them to continue their success in this season is to allow two goals or less, well, and that's it. If your numbers are correct, Karen, that certainly sounds like the formula for success. You know what, uh, let me ask you about the, the stuff that went down here at the end. I, uh, You know what, I, it doesn't bug me. I mean, you know, two years ago when Ted Nolan first got this team going. Were you a serial killer man, or what? Oh, come you, on, he ended it. I mean, it doesn't bother you. Isn't that not going to keep you up all night? That rough stuff? I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really like this. Well, you want me to be honest? Don't sit your head in the roof. Ah, it's good stuff. That's about time. Well, you know, that's time. the way to play. Well, as soon, Get an attitude. As soon as Ochik went, uh, you said, uh, you know, and I said, Barnaby's the guy who's going to go do something, and he did. I mean, you know, it, this is hockey. I mean, it's the way it is. I, I mean, okay, you know, the, Vancouver's frustrated. Brashear jumps peck in, and then the thing goes on and on. But Lindy knew what was going on. He brings Shields in. They expected this to happen. But, I mean, Mike, it's happened how many times when you were playing? That, that's... The game. They it got so bad they had a.